Hey everybody, today we're debating evolution on trial and we are starting right now with Taylor, aka Snake's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Snake. The floor is all yours. Thank you. All right, so um, I guess evolution on trial tonight and uh, in order to challenge evolution, these guys need to define a hard limit on how much a population can change. Um, and I will continuously point out that they're unable to do this throughout the debate. I also keep an eye out for that. Um, there's no genetic limits. There's no morphological limits that they can point to that would uh, uh, go against evolution. I'm not trying to say that there are no limits, period, but that would prevent evolution. Um, every attempt to put on like genetic limits are entirely arbitrary and either separates humans and apes while dividing up their declared kinds, like all cats and uh, are unrelated to all other cats, um, or um, and that would overload the arc, or it gives them roughly the kinds they want, except that it puts humans and apes as the same kind. So all attempts of that have failed. Um, there has been no attempt to define morphological limits, um, but these are necessary to challenge this idea and the consensus. Um, in order to challenge scientific consensus that has already been proven to the vast, vast, vast majority of the experts, one must be qualified in the subject and give, give good evidence. They have neither. Actually, I'm not sure about... Uh, Victoria, but uh, um, what will not work as a challenge to evolution is to point out some hole in the scientific understanding and say, it's not possible to know it and therefore God can fill it. That is a fallacy, which must be uh, dismissed out of hand. I'm compelled to dismiss fallacies um, or else I'm being irrational. Um, evolution has been on trial in the Kitzmiller versus Dover trial. Uh, no surprises here, but uh, evolution won even with a conservative judge. Um, and uh, so in order for a scientific uh, a concept to be scientific, it must have scientific applications, uh, which basically means it has to have novel testable predictions if it's a model. Um, creationism has zero, evolution has many, um, based on common descent, uh, like transitional species, uh, Archaeopteryx trichotelic are the famous ones. Um, creationist has no reason to predict those even exist. Um, Multiple lines of uh, evidence cross confirm each other. And um, at this point, I'd like to share my screen. All right, is that working? Yep. Okay. So uh, genetic clocks line up with geological and radiometric clocks. And if these are wrong, the Earth. If the Earth is young, the amount of radiation alone would melt the Earth, so certainly not a possibility. Um, let's see. All right, advance the slide. Come on. Okay. ERVs are DNA elements that viruses inserted into ancient genomes, which are inherited. Um, since they're all the result of infections in random areas of the genome, they make for very good uh, markers of ancestry since the likelihood that two species would get infected by the same virus in the same place is uh, virtually nothing. Um, just for uh, 205 shared HERVWs, that's one class of HRVs, um, humans and chimps share 205 of 213, I think. Um, these are the chances of just that shared placement. Um, that's about uh, 588 with um, 1,416 zeros after it, I think. So basically, and that's like uh, several orders uh, more molecules that are even in the universe. So mathematically impossible um, for humans not to be descended from apes, which is of course the most offensive relationship to creationists, obviously. Um, and that's only one class of ERVs. And that's only one class of uh, transposable um, elements that also trace ancestry. So uh, that's a major thing. But my favorite point is basically that every single difference between populations in life's history is already accounted for by observable microevolution that they accept. Um, we know that the size, shape, orientation, location, number, and chemical composition of bones, organs, and tissues can change within accepted biblical kinds, and creationists accept this. Um, these are slides from Call Me Emo, and as he beautifully demonstrates, the amount of accepted variation within kinds is larger than the gaps between them. Uh, variation is covered by transitional forms, but if creationists insist transitional forms are their own kind, 
they shoot themselves in the foot since now the range of accepted diversity overlaps the gaps, meaning there's absolutely no reasonable barriers between any of the kinds. And that's because they're so uh, close morphologically to two different kinds. Um, if the transitional forms are explained as being part of either kinds, this just shrinks the gap between two original, uh, two original non uh, sorry, between the original two to non-existence. Uh, resulting in a unified kind. So the amount of creationist accepted variation within kinds, such as in coelacanth, is so large that it's the same as the difference between fishes that creationists consider not related. Uh, variation within kind is larger than the gaps between kinds. Creationist orgs admit Mesohippus is an ancestral horse, but that's actually uh, more similar to that of tapers, uh, which they arbitrarily separate for absolutely no reason. Uh, the foot structure of creationist accepted horse kind varies wildly from four toes to one. That's major coordinated structural change. Variation within kind is larger than between them. This is an inconsistent standard, and thus any doubts as to relationships are unreasonable and irrational by definition. Uh, comparative anatomy is viewed as valid to draw a relation within kinds, but is arbitrarily dropped whenever creationists feel like it. So I would ask how they know that. Uh, Ceratopsids are related. They'll say anatomy. Then you ask them humans, they'll just draw an arbitrary line. They also claim to be able to identify fossil snakes from just jawbones or vertebra alone. Um, yet they drop comparative anatomy whenever convenient. Barominology, the creationist term for classifying each kind, demonstrates this self-defeating problem. As Behrmans declared, uh, clusters of morphological similarity organisms that uh, fit this pattern in clusters appear uh, but and then larger gaps lie between them. Uh, those are declared barons as clusters. Um, but as more fossils are discovered, the distance between like aves, birds, and dromaeosaur dinosaurs, like velociraptors, uh, collapsed, and the variation within kind exceeded the distance between the uh, variation between kinds. Whoops. Uh, so could these be the same kind? There's no way for a creationist to tell. What about these? All that separates is slight proportional differences in the same bones, aka microevolution. Same here, microevolution. Same here microevolution, but when we add them all together, we see macroevolution. Um, so why can't these accepted microchanges add up in the same lineage? There's no answer to this. Slight variation of existing structures is observable, like flexing of fins for walking limbs, uh, folding of teeth to make fangs, which there are half evolved transitional forms to this day, yet still functional. Um, theory of uh, life being connected gives us predictions about the fossil record, uh, predictions that the inconsistent and vague creationist hypothesis cannot make, thus making evolution scientific by definition. Organisms don't suddenly spout rings, they modify them from existing structures. Plants are amazing examples of macroevolution. Uh, these are all related plants because they can graft and breed with each other. Uh, they have different body plans, though. Uh, such as broccolis and mustards. Um, fractal patternicity in Romanesco broccoli is uh, an example of functional information evolving without intelligent design. Um, we've observed single left. cellular organisms evolving into multicellular. Uh, there's uh, ma major bone changes, numbers of bones, um, uh, functional changes in bones of creationist accepted kinds, uh, change uh, new muscle groups evolving in mammals uh, uh, that they accept are related. Um, that's why there's vestigial structures um, like nails on manatees and seals, legs develop on whales and snakes in vitro. So what separates these uh, monkeys from lemurs? Nothing, because they agree the same thing can happen in dogs. Uh, this happens in the same species of fish, different functional conformations. So at what point do these changes stop accumulating? And that will be my one of my major sticking points tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for that opening statement. We'll kick it over to Snake's partner for the remaining roughly four minutes or so for his opening as well. In terms of the, you could say, argument on behalf of evolution. I'm going to minimize your screen, Snake, a.k.a. Taylor. And with that, thanks so much for being with us. Atheist Jr., the floor is all yours. Yeah, could you share uh, my screen now? You bet. Okay. So uh, the title of this debate is Evolution on Trial. So let's remember that in the scientific community, there's no debate about whether or not evolution happened in the past and continues to happen. We are still evolving, and that's not controversial. Uh, evolution, as well as the religious concept of intelligent design, which is not a scientific theory, they both have been on trial in the past. It didn't go well for ID. On December 20th, 2005, in Kitzmiller versus Dover, the district court 
Judge John Jones ordered the Dover Area School Board to refrain from maintaining an intelligent design policy in any school within the Dover Area District. Now, Judge Jones wrote that ID is not science and cannot be judged as valid accepted scientific theory as it has failed to publish in peer-reviewed journals, engage in research and testing, and gain acceptance in the scientific community. This was the first challenge to the constitutionality of teaching intelligent design in the public school science classroom. And um, you could see that they, the front page news in Denver or in Pennsylvania, I guess, was that ID is not science. And let's look at just some quick evidence about creationism and what they say about kinds. And creationists somehow accept major chromosomal uh, translocations and mutations in horses, something they say is impossible for human and evolution. Everything they say is made up ad hoc just to try to refute a specific fact they don't like, but nothing's derived from a central thesis other than God did it, which I think we saw in my last debate on here. Um, so you'll see that they say that horses and donkeys are, can be the same kind, which are separated by two chromosomes. But if you ask them, are humans and chimps the same kind? They would say no, even though they only have a difference of two chromosomes, just like these. And these animals are more fit than their fossil ancestors that, uh, that have more toes than them and more fit for horsey things. Now, um, some otters can be very weasel-like, while others not so much, and still others look like they're on the cusp of being seals with their paddle-like paddle -like flipper feet. Remember, creationists admitted that these evolved from weasels. They're all in the same kind, so they admit Flippers can evolve from terrestrial feet, and we have more and less seal-like versions in, other, in otter variations. Sea otters are closer to seals, while river otters are more like flat-footed swimming weasels. And we can see in the fossil record animals that look like a combination of bears and dogs or seals and dogs. We get a, a transition where it's getting impossible to tell which category they're in. Like if you look at the transition between theropod dinosaurs to earth uh, theropod dinosaurs to what look like modern birds it gets to a point where paleontologists can't tell which category they're in because they have the traits of both and i think snake showed this slide as well but it basically just shows that uh when it comes to specifically human evolution this is a problem for for creationists and because they're biblical literalists so if you want to take genesis literally then it's going to be a, con a conflict between the idea that Humans were created as is, as we are today, walking upright, intelligent, with very little body hair and intelligent to speak English versus the fact that we had a common ancestor with bonobos and chimps and other apes. So this is the primary conflict. This is the reason why they don't want to accept evolution. And, you know, I'll just end my presentation there because Snakes was a little bit, a little bit longer than mine. So you got it. And. With that, we're going to jump into the opening statements from, you could say, the anti-evolution side. But before we do, I want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. We're thrilled to have you here. Hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates coming up. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, it will be a juicy, controversial one this Sunday. Is Islam true between Muhammad and apostate prophet? You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button. With that, thank you very much. BGG and Maddox, the floor is all yours. Yes, I'll go first as I'm, I'm new here. All right, then. Um, first, I'm uh, going to get an audio test and everything good? All right, then. Uh, evolution smacks of human invention and confabulation. What there is is a lot of claims about the engine of evolution and the possibility of uh, life through deep time and random mutations becomes constructive in order, all of which are stipulated to exist, but none of which are demonstrated to exist. There's a striking absence of evidence where once you would expect to find it, Unless you want to propose and imagine and verify possibility of, of evolution where, where one would not expect to have, to, to have evidence. Yeah, we have no demonstration of evolution being possible or, or even likely. We don't, have, we, we, don't, we don't even have confirmed accounts of evolution. What there is is linguistic sleight of hand semantics in which devolution is treated and presented as evolution. But this is, more, this is nothing more than the use of a well in double think. It's, it's akin to saying subtraction is addition, losing is gaining. 
slavery is freedom. Devolution is evolution. And th that's really my intro. Kick it over to Maddox as well, then. Thanks very much. Maddox, the floor is all yours. Well, it's good to be back here on the one and only MDD. I'm actually trying out something new. I am streaming live, everybody, from Centennial Park here in Nashville. Behind me is not a backdrop. It's actually a full-size replica of the Greek Parthenon. Thought it'd be fun to try some out here. So, James, thanks for inviting me on for this debate. Uh, it's kind of interesting listening to our opponents in their opening statements. I, I wonder if they forgot that this is evolution on trial. It's their position that is on trial, not alternative models. So, um, this isn't about defending creationism, YEC, OEC, uh, theistic evolution, any of those uh, models. That has nothing to do with uh, tonight's debate. So why 90% of y'all's opening statements was all about uh, those positions doesn't really make any sense to me if you're actually making a case for yours. Or perhaps you are just operating from the usual Evo Atheist on YouTube position, which is, oh, consensus is X, therefore it must be 100% true, therefore I'm not actually going to uh, analyze my own position, I'm just going to try and deflect over to somebody else's, which I find very interesting. You know, you get into things like the uh, the bush or the orchard of uh, organisms from origin of life that potentially, especially on the protein level, potentially defeats the entire premise of uh, universal common ancestry. You have all of the uh, issues with, uh, you know, gene regulatory networks that are necessary for uh, new body plans to exist. We have the recent discoveries that there's dramatically uh, controlled uh, mutations inside of coding regions, but there is much more open in the non-coding regions. However, the uh, evolutionists want to use similarities in the coding regions of the genome to somehow be the proof beyond all doubt of their position, but we're actually finding out that it's being much more controlled. Um, you know, one of the favorite talking points right now, which I, I'm very fascinated to see how long it takes for that one, this one to be uh, shuffled under the rug like so many um, in the past, but like ERVs, for example, right? So we now know beyond doubt that it's uh, essential to all sorts of stages of embryo developments. We know that uh, many of them work in conjunction with things like P53 in order to uh, stop cancer tumors, uh, have the ability to mimic uh, viruses and be able to operate with the immune system to take out everything. It actually kind of looks like they're uh, defense mechanisms, which I always find very interesting and people don't think about that. Then you get into stuff like, oh, well, it must be a uh, endogenous retrovirus because, well, we need things like reverse transcriptase, all these kind of things. Well, I guess they weren't paying attention to the fact that uh, the discoveries in relation to something that was also called junk by and therefore evidence of evolution uh, up until about two years ago, the uh, polymerase theta, uh, turns out it actually is has a higher fidelity rate of RNA to DNA than the HIV reverse transcriptase. So there's so many different things that keep being discovered, which completely, you know, negate or at a minimum uh, decimate the, you know, dogmatic positions that are taken by so many of the folks that, you know, defend these positions. And I, I find it so funny that in relation to, you know, I forget who, which one of them said it, but it was, oh, well, if you don't have, you know, the piece of paper that makes you an expert in XYZ, therefore you're not allowed to actually, you know, really have positions or challenge a position. But to my knowledge, neither one of these guys have those pieces of paper either, but are, or on the flip side, um, have invested, really investigated um, alternative arguments. So are you qualified to even be having this conversation, or are we all here able to use our intellect and be able to analyze the arguments, the evidence, and be able to reach uh, conclusions and potentially challenge uh, the status quo? Because it's not like there aren't things like the third way in uh, evolution that are challenging the conventional paradigm and saying, oh, we need things like extended synthesis and, you know, the, the, the standard models aren't really working. Um, so, I mean, all, all these things are, you know, growing rapidly to denigrate the dogmatic position that's taken by so many folks on, on YouTube. Now, something I found extraordinarily fascinating from Snake Was Right was trying to use the uh, 5.88 to the 10 to the 1,088 power, whatever it was, or 1,400 power, whatever that was. Um, it's so funny that that number would indicate a probability of zero or just not being possible in this context for ERV placements, but dramatically even, even more improbable uh, things for just the formation of genes in general and overall, you know, uh, transcription translation factors, all that kind of stuff. The numbers are exponentially larger than that. But in the conversations these guys have both had, they claim that, oh, well, there's a possibility, therefore. Um, so how are you going to say on one side that this gigantic uh, probability number equals not possible without it being your worldview? 
but completely uh, utilize uh, the opposite uh, context to reject um, opposing positions on the plausibility of these other things actually coming uh, to be. So I think, folks, as you uh, listen throughout the open discussion we're going to have, just make sure you pay attention to the fact that there's going to be dramatic attempts to deflect and not actually defend their own position and to somehow claim that this is all about God of the gaps and all the things like uh, Atheist Jr. were saying, when in reality, this is about the weaknesses in evolution, which is what's on trial, not whether or not God did it. I yield. You got it. Thank you very much. And we're going to jump into open conversation. Everybody's favorite. Want to let you know little channel housekeeping stuff. In particular, our guests are linked in the description. Keep that in mind throughout the debate, as well as they're also linked to the podcast. As every debate from Modern Day Debate ends up at the podcast, where our guests, such as Atheist Jr., Snake, BGG, and John Maddox, are linked as well in the description box there. Last but not least, a lot of people are like, hey, what about an intelligent design on trial debate or creation on de on trial debate we would be thrilled to host it if you'd be interested in doing that debate you can reach me at modern day debate at gmail.com as we are very open to having those topics it just so happened that people were especially into evolution on trial as of late but with that gentlemen thanks very much the floor is all yours so how would you reconstruct the relationships between uh, organisms that you accept are related uh, if not by morphological similarity well here I have, a, I have a very low criteria for evidence for evolution. So, for example, uh, can, can I share my screen? Okay. All right, then. So, uh, to the anti-evolution uh, stance would say, these are not the result of uh, uh, evolution. So, oh, how do I exit? Oh. I'm going to share a different screen. So my, my, my question is simple. So since my criteria for, for evidence for evolution is very simple. According to evolution, there are many transitionals between the, the wolf-like ancestor and the Dalmatian. So my question would be, give me at least one transitional between the wolf and the Dalmatian. Uh, if, the if, if you can't present this, trans, this transitional, you have no evidence. That means it it's would, just hypothetical. It, like it would be the child of that wolf. Uh, what is that? That is a slightly different version because children are not exact clones of their parents. Okay. There, there there has to be, so are either of you going to answer my there, question? I want to. There second, has to be an Forgive me one second for jumping in. I do want to say, Bubblegum Gun, this is my fault because I know that I told you to bring the mic a little bit closer right before we started, but it's a little bit too close. If you're able okay, to bring it back just a little bit further. Is that better? That. And that should be better. And I'll okay. try to adjust it in OBS in terms of getting your volume up higher. Go ahead. Okay. So um, is this an answer to my question or? Well, is this, this is, just... I'm presenting a question because you, you're well, you, on trial. You, this you, is evolution. You kind of changed, you kind of changed the topic though. No, this is evolution on trial. This is the topic of the debate. Yeah, okay. I, so, I, I, so it's a discussion portion. I asked a question. Well, would you like me to repeat it? Well, you're, you guys are on trial. This the thing. I think his question was related to evolution, though, wasn't it? Yeah, this is this is. So you're saying, so is this no, transitional? Wait, so James, is this a uh, interrogation or is this just discussion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys. You, I mean, this is so you can debate. pass my question if you want. Oh, we can get to it. I'm presenting. A, this is my criteria for evolution. It's very simple. It's I. I, I this is bottom. Of, this is bottom of the barrel. Yeah, okay. I answered it. Okay, what is that? Are you just are you just saying the wolf is the ancestor of the wolf? So are you saying uh, a wolf gave direct birth to a Dalmatian? That's not what you asked. You asked what is a tr give me an example of a transition between that wolf and the Dalmatian, and the answer is the child of the wolf. Each because what is each. That? What do you mean? Well, what is it? Okay, here let me see. Let me get, let me show you a picture of what I mean. I mean, are you looking for something that's half wolf, half dog? Because no, I'm looking for an intermediate. Okay, here, how do I share my screen again? Okay. I mean, what's with what's with the um, hippograph or or uh, I forget what you call those animals. Those what's with the picture yeah, in the middle? Yeah, why why is that there? Is that what you think that we think evolution is? No, I'm asking you. Are these See these nodes? Those are inter intermediates between the wolf and the Dalmatian. 
So no, you have to those, get those are different breeds of dogs. No, see these nodes, the arrows. No, oh, that's okay. not so how phylogeny works. This is this is how uh, it works. No, it's not. This, okay, are you are you positing there is no intermediate between the Dalmatian and the gray wolf? No, the wolf ancestor. There the is no intermediate. Are not meant to represent any particular specimen. No, they are they are meant. Okay, are you saying these intermediates are merely abstractions or are they real? Uh, they're abstractions representing real phenomena. Wait, 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 wait. So move, move the Come arrow again? up. Say that again. One node, and that's. Oh, we can do that again. Specimen. Uh, sure. Give me a second. I'll get that. We should remember that these dogs at the bottom, these represent populations of animals. They're not individual dogs and individual wolves either. So you're asking if you're asking for you you're asking for one transitional. We're talking about populations of animals. Are you questioning whether dogs are related to wolves? Like, you're starting there. I mean, creationists, um, creationists okay. accept they say okay. that they're the same kind because uh, that's not what's on this trial. Is, I, uh, what what my partner thinks in his free time is irrelevant to this debate. This is evolution on trial. So I'm asking you: Are these nodes uh, the last common ancestor? Are they real or are they abstractions? Well, they're on a and graph. Nodes are abstract. The okay, so they don't exist. That and you need mean, these that's, not what abstract, that's not what abstraction means. Yes, it is. It means they aren't real. No, no the genie from Aladdin isn't real. And a graph an abstraction of, is a, a graph is a representation. Of, it's a simplification. Okay. Yeah. When, when, I, when I mark are. my height on the wall, that's an abstraction too, but it represents okay, my height. If, if they're not abstractions, tell me what they are. Well, the data of evolution would, would, would this this would okay so we're trying to waste our time they have okay so family trees or uh graphs like this if they actually actually represented the amount of species there are they would not be able to fit on a textbook page so they have to shrink them and simplify them and they have to make these abstractions in order to make it palatable for us to read because we're humans and we can't actually uh, see that much data. It would, it would be too, uh, too much data for us to, to actually comprehend in a useful way. So that's why abstractions are used. They're a simplification of the larger data field. Right. And the, hang, hang on, let me, let me jump here for a second. So the, the simplification that's being talked about in my opinion is a, way to just gloss over the rapidly growing amount of dissimilarities like so the the more genomes of different types of organisms that are being sequenced the more we're discovering that there is a greater amount of differences and similarities in terms of uh, unique genes this was uh, there was a paper on this uh, i think like two years ago on the exact topic of like oh turns out as we sequence more and more types of organisms we're finding less and less similarities and greater and greater dissimilarities so the amount of mutation and natural selection and fixation of all sorts of de novo functions uh I mean, that, that's just getting bigger and bigger and completely sense, irrelevant and sen- relevant well, no, is no 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 from from your uh, t- timeline, right? And you're the one that claims that there's uh, improbabilities and things have to be taken into account. So if you're now having uh, sequences that the probabilities of their formation through undirected process is greater than the number that you put forth in relation to ERVs, um, the, it's uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So how do you explain the massive amount of dissimilarities in the coding regions and as well as non-coding regions, the genomes, as we're finding out more and more of it is uh, utterly essential for the, those organisms to exist? Uh, it's irrelevant because it's mutations and you know that. But Evolution uh, can account what, for that. What, what, what no, no, matters, no, no, no. hold on, I'm speaking. What matters is what's, what is the similarity between the most similar organisms? Can evolution account for the gaps between those? Well, yeah. And so the wider we widen our scope, there is nothing you can do well, tell me that what will is... bring a, a barrier between any of the observed things that we, we see within uh, uh, modern animals. All of that we see within modern animals is uh, explains the differences in between every organism in the fossil record as well. 
So it doesn't in- matter if there's a difference between an elephant and a human. What matters is a difference between a human and an ape. Well, give me one intermediate between this gray wolf-like ancestor and the Dalmatian. What is it? Where did the Dalmatian dog come from? I, I haven't memorized dog phylogeny. You, you can go so, look. At it. I, I got the graph. You want to look at it? I, yeah, I, I, share can, it. I don't care. Are you are you putting dog evolution on trial? This is evolution on trial. Um, okay. Well, the, the common understanding is evolution, uh, common ancestry evolution. So do you think did, that do- did do you, you think dog something somewhere? else? Do you think dogs are, you just, are related to are wolves? Are you just trying to avoid this? Uh, are, you, are you trying to avoid this argument because you know you can't answer it? We're trying to understand it. No, I'm okay. trying to stay. I'm trying to not let you simple. waste my time because There's an this is a debate about common ancestry of all organisms, this not about dogs. It's about evolution. No, it's not. It's not. A, the debate is not about evolution. The debate is about evolution from common ancestry. From com- that wasn't in the title. So, so uh, th- this is a bad faith that you're arguing. But even, if, but even okay. if it was, it would still be part of the evolution of ancestry. Okay. So, so the question is very simple. Uh, Dalmatians here somewhere around the circle, outer edge of the circle, and you have the, the wolf uh, answers answers are here in the middle. So there are multiple intermediates, and all I need for evidence for evolution is for you to name one of these intermediates. What there is, are fossil dogs, dude. Uh, can, can you present a fossil, or is, or is a fossil abstract too? A fossil that's an do, abstract too. Do we so need it's, the? It's abstract. Do we need the, it's an abstract fossil, so which means it doesn't exist, and you we're simply stipulating. No, there are fossil dogs. Okay. Would we? Uh, has anybody presented these uh, this fossil intermediate? Would you have to literally yeah. have the fossil shown to you for it to count as evidence? There are multiple intermediates. The coincidence that we can't find a single one. That wasn't an answer. So It is an answer. Why can't we, we find a single intermediate? Because this It was this, a yes or no this, question. How is that a yes or no? Okay. Would you, would you have to have the actual fossil of that intermediate dog shown to you physically in front of you for it to count as evidence? At least one, yes. Because if you have zero fossils, and you don't, it, it could be a fossil, it could be a, or either could be also be a living animal. You have neither. You understand how, that? How could it be transitional between uh, an ancient wolf and a uh, Dalmatian if it's uh, if it's a Doberman? Like that's a different breed. Okay. Like that's what doesn't make sense about your chart. You're asking how could how, which, show me which of these. Which of these breeds of dog is transitional between a modern Dalmatian and an ancient wolf? Like, no, the question breed, is, breed. No, okay, the question, so I, okay, the so question I'm, is, I'm not really sure what you guys give are, me are one arguing. intermediate. I don't know what you guys are arguing about at this point. The in relation to if we're going to go down the dog rabbit, the dog wolf rabbit hole, is the is a y'all's position that uh, dogs are the result of. Vari- pre- preceding variations in wolf genomes, or the variations are all the result of mutation in the in the traditional paradigm sense. I, w- I would say it's a mixture of natural selection and artificial selection because we had natural selection of wolves uh, to dogs, and then when we domesticated dogs, that's where the artificial selection comes in and gets you very specified breeds like a French bulldog with a flat nose or a chihuahua that's very small or a Great Dane that's bred for its size. Right, but you're dodging the point the, the point of the question. The question was, Is was the necessary genomic information already present in the wolf in order to, whether it be through uh, natural or artificial, in order for the breeds of dogs to descend from it? Or is it necessitate uh, the formation of a whole bunch of new information in order for these... Uh, different uh, breeds take place. It would be new and you get that from mutations. So you're suggesting that we couldn't very systematically recreate the breeds. Uh, it would have to be all random mutations that they are just selected for, or those it could be like reconstituted via uh, purposeful manipulation of the genome. No, like I said, it was a mixture of our, uh, natural selection and artificial selection, but both of those evolve, evo- involve uh, mutations. It's just that with one, you're intentionally trying to select for certain traits. 
Now I'm not a geneticist, so, 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 so I don't shi- know. So Shih Tzus, so Shih Tzus, I believe are either the first or second closest to a wolf genomically. Um, you actually think that they're that similar, and like that defends your position. Did I or, did I say or imply that? Well, I, I'm saying that from you guys like to go down the rabbit hole of morphology, right? And that all these variations must be indicative of uh, evolution in the traditional sense. But we now have something like I mean, eventually you get a chihuahua, right? And if you're looking at things from like the fossil record perspective, and you weren't doing a direct uh, genome comparison, uh, are you actually going to try and argue that the skeleton could actually be truly uh, timelined in between a wolf and a chihuahua? Well, morphology what does that mean, it, timelined between a wolf and chihuahua. From a I, dis- I think, uh, evolution I, is all about descendancy and heredity, right? I think I know what he's asking. So. Uh, morphology has to do more with just the uh, shape and how an animal looks. That's why the first taxonomies, the first phylogenetic trees were made just based on how animals looks. It wasn't until we discovered genetics that they were able to go back and test the DNA of these animals and see specifically how closely related they were or not closely related. But no, I think if an alien came and saw a chihuahua skeleton and a wolf skeleton, they probably wouldn't think that they're closely related or related at all. Okay, cool. Because of genetic testing that we can know that or the fact that we know we made chihuahuas basically. Cool. So is uh, 99% of all genetic comparisons done from extant uh, genome sequencing or uh, preceding comparisons? You mean extant versus extinct? Because it, I think you you have to be DNA only lasts for a certain amount of time that you can still test it. Like there well, are fossils we can't DNA can, DNA, DNA can lo- can last for quite some time, but that's not the point. My point is is the uh, is the majority of the of evolutionary theory based on inference. The no, majority it's based no. on prediction. Okay, then, then tell um, me. So the point about media. morphological similarity is that since we know. There's variation within animals that we see today that we know are related. That certainly is plausible for how animals that are similar change from each other. Okay. So are, it's are, you, are you missing the whole? Are you and missing then, the, the and foundational then, point um, of the question? And then when we have this hypothesis of okay, so maybe this goes back further and further, then that's able to predict forms that you guys had no idea existed, and exactly where they were and what they are. Okay, th- this so this that's whole, how science th- works. This how you that's guys you can't don't do. have. Okay, again, you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can do. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, this is example number one of the attempt to deflect over. Oh, to you guys, you guys didn't think of X, Y, and Z. That's not the point. That's not the Sorry. question. That's not the thing that's being brought up here. This is in yeah, relation your terrible, to terrible uh, model of creation. But let's not over talk. Okay, so I'm not discussing anything from a creationist perspective. Okay, we're talking about the necessities of the genome and the, the differences and the very hyper-specific functional information that is necessary in order for different organisms to exist. Do you deny the fact that there is dramatic amounts of uh, differentiation, the functional information, regulatory sequences, et cetera, et cetera, that are necessary for different organisms to exist? No, and that's the point, is we there are observed mechanisms that change those, that those yeah. differences can be the result of. We observe the ways that those changes arise. Yeah, and differences so, and don't those debunk changes, evolution. Those changes can be predicted in the, the fossil record. That's the thing, you do have no fossils. If you did have fossils, you would be able to present at least one transitional between the Dalmatian and the wolf. And Go to a museum. They don't yes, have they a do. single one of them. Museum. Yes, they do. Uh, give me one then, Atheist Jr. I told you, the transition is between that you're you're saying ancient wolves and I guess domesticated dogs. Well, every oh, link be. along between the two is a transitional form between them. So the and child those, of that the child of that wolf is a transition. Are those transitionals real or are they abstract? Those animals actually existed. Yeah. Okay. Can you present at least a single one? I don't have to. Is it that you don't have to, or is it that you can't? 
I don't personally have the skeleton of that wolf fossil. No, so I can't. I'm Isn't sorry. it so convenient that we can't find a single transitional between the Dalmatian and the wolf-like ancestor? Can. Do you think wolves and, and dogs the, uh, are related? Absolutely not. But that would be you irrelevant. Don't. That would be you irrelevant don't. to this conversation because this is not about creationism. Okay, this is about up, evolution. I, I didn't say anything paper. about creationism. Look up the paper, Ancient Wolf Genome Reveals an Early Divergence of Domestic Dog Ancestors and Admixture into High-Latitude Breeds. Okay, tell me, tell me what dog is. Specimens. What is the intermediate? Uh, I simply want to know what it is. Uh, they label them with, like, numbers. And <laughs> numbers are just abstractions. What? It's a label. Yeah, an abstract label. Are you, are you an abstraction? They call it the Timer Wolf. Of course, I'm not an abstraction. But you are presenting abstractions but you're not, but you're as not evidence in, you're for not, evolution. You're not in front of me right now, though. I don't see you. Atheist Jr., you're clearly dodging what is obvious. What's okay, the so obvious I've problem given, I've given presented? You, I've given you a citation. I gave you the name of it. I just need yeah. you to present the at least reason, one transition. I did. I for dead. I did. And so the reason that I you gave uh, me brought numbers. up... I gave you a name, actually. Uh, what name? Time Your Wolf. And I gave you the name of the paper that it appears so in and it's reported. So um, the reason that I the reason that I bring up uh, creationism is because it is the most skeptical position that people hold on this earth about evolution. So I was hoping to start with some common ground of what is accepted variation of change, so that we don't have to start at biology 101 for an hour and a half debate. But we can't even agree on if wolves and dogs are related, though. Yeah, that's sake, his tactic. He's trying to waste our time. For the sake of the debate, a logical uh, okay, so, 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 so first off, my position. So first off, the I don't think anything that I brought up is like necessarily biology 101. First off, the he <laughs> bubble gums was yeah. the 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 macro view of all of this is when the more we dive into genetics, which originally, unless you guys are denying this, has was considered the foundational defense of evolutionary theory but the more that we the more research that's done and the more that we discover that larger and larger portions of the genome have specific function and that very minor mutations even in you know strs and things of that nature like oh if it's as long as it's between 8 and 13 base pairs we're good if you have less than or greater than then you have xyz disease like we're discovering this out the wazoo and if the foundational premises of evolution i.e you can like have all these uh, mutations that can take place until you know eventually something functional comes into, into existence and you can have co-option all these different things if that's true then why in what we're observing now is it look like if you don't have ridiculously high fidelity rates um, you have massive issues i.e very often leading up to death so how is it actually plausible rather than just being inferred and extrapolated out from a, you know, mental gymnastics, that somehow all these things that we're observing, which would get in the way of evolution actually being plausible in the macro view, um, somehow just magically happened in the past. Like, how, how do you guys defend that? So I asked this in my intro, what is the uh, genetic limit? What, how many differences defines um, that something is not related? Okay, that's not what I, that's not remotely what I brought up. I was that is I, exactly no, what no, you that's, brought that's up. Not, you said, no, you no, said no, there no. are major differences in the genomes, which is somehow a point against the common ancestry of the organisms that we're talking about. So I asked a direct answer to that uh, on topic, which is how large of a difference does that need to be to challenge evolution? For the sake of... Uh, hang, 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 on. You, you, hang on, ladies and gentlemen, he just said he asked a, a direct answer. Okay, so... Yeah, you, can ask, you can answer the, questions with questions. So, I mean, so, people so, miss, but right, people miss. You, you, you completely... You can, well, yeah, because he's he's dodging this is on my question. You know, you're dodging my question, which was... Well, well it was not, about not, five minutes long. Yeah, you talk so in I, a very I, complicated I, way that's hard to follow. Well, I, I apologize that multiple structure uh, components to a compound sentence are going over your head. Maybe you should take off your beanie. But the whole point that was being made was in relation to the fidelity necessity in order for things not to die. Okay, so if we know you need to have 99.9999% uh, fidelity right now in order to not have massive issues, the uh, it doesn't matter if it's like in humans and chimps, I believe it's somewhere between 35 and 36 million uh, base pair differences, I believe is the standard, uh, standardly accepted position, right? The if 
we know that very minor modifications, exponentially smaller than 36 million or 35 million, whichever number you want to go with, um, cause you to die. Um, how is it plausible in the what six million year timeline or whatever it is, the current uh, supposed uh, history is for that many changes to happen uh, from a split of, from a common ancestor and extinction not to have taken place? I mean, seriously, if you're talking about having so it, now you're that, asking about, that much difference. So now you're asking about mutational load, mutational meltdown? Uh, ultimately, yes. But I mean, I'm serious. In, in context of fidelity, how is it plausible to make those jumps? There are multiple um, papers studying mutational meltdown, Muller's ratchet, where uh, it's quantified, where there are ways that, where, you know, bad mutations accrue, but there are multiple mechanisms observed that counteract the accumulation of uh, deleterious mutations. Yeah, and I feel like you're asking, like, how come, in, how come there isn't just more extinction, but there was over that time period, almost like 98% of species have gone extinct. Very few species um, are what, uh, you know, uh, Darwin called favored races that actually have been able to survive even up to the common day or the present day. Okay. For example, let's take an example. Could we uh, take a uh, pure breed uh, chihuahuas and evolve them to be as tall as a, a Great Dane or a German Shepherd without running into very disease causing or just the utter death of the Chihuahua. The, Why would I the, expect that we couldn't? We got Chihuahuas from wolves. Okay, so- We, we have Great Danes, so. So can you guys demonstrate by uh, breeding, uh, selective breeding yourselves, and provide uh, through using pure, uh, pure, uh, pure breed chihuahuas only, and then select them to be as tall as a Great Dane or a German Shepherd. Has that ever been done? You could breed it with a Great Dane or a Shepherd. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's yeah, you can breed breeding. animals to be larger. Yeah, okay, you so you're saying chihuahua and chihuahua. Yeah, okay, chihuahua and chihuahua. but yeah, but you can breed it, organisms to be larger. Has that ever they been do done? That, that's, yes, that's why we have Great Danes. It's been done with any, okay. Where, where did the uh, Great Dane come from? It's been done with all livestock. So you said you said you're saying the Great Dane came from like a chihuahua-sized dog. What that's is what the I intermediate? That's not okay. what I said. Uh, sorry, I sounded like you said that. You, uh, no, Snake said that we can breed animals to be bigger, and I said that's yeah. why we have Great Danes because we bred a dog, okay. like the, the ancestors of the Great Dane, and livestock, bred, agriculture. Exactly. Everything we, eat, we bred to be I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure where this whole back and forth is going, but I, are you guys actually suggesting that you could get a Great Dane from Chihuahuas? A Great Dane sized dog, not an exact Great Dane. Well, okay. Has so, that ever been done? So, so you think that Chihuahuas could breed and ultimately could be selected to get as big as Great Danes? Uh, yeah, you can breed animals to get much larger than they started with. I do it. Well, Take well, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that there aren't there can't. There's a cap, though. I mean, it, it's pretty well recognized that there's caps on how big things can get from a starting point, right? Yes. Yeah, so you can't get a dog the size of Texas. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, that's okay. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm asking you directly. Um, do you think that if you're starting with the available genome in two chihuahuas. Do you actually think it's plausible to be able to get it up to the size of a grain Dane? Not the size of Texas, bro, because that's not actually a realistic concept. So let's get back to uh, the real world. So do you think that uh, getting it up to the size of a great Dane is actually plausible? Why wouldn't you be able to? How come you can't do it? The children could be a little bit bigger, and then the children of those children could be a little bit bigger. Here, and I'll you tell just you, keep going. I'll tell you why, that's, why it's not possible, uh, Taylor, because we tried this with the German Shepherd. And what happens, they ran into a wall in which uh, it causes hip dysplasia on my German Shepherd. So okay. it, can, it, 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 wasn't, it didn't even get that bigger. It just had a bigger uh, hunch. That's a German it's, Shepherd. Some okay. dogs, some dogs. It will happen with a Chihuahua the same too. You'll still get the hip dysplasia. So uh, you can't mutations. assume that just because one lineage has a certain uh, mutational confirmation. Okay, mutations. That another breed will have that. Okay, so, so, mutations so, so, caused hang, hang, by hang, hang man. On, hang on. So, are you saying that there's always a possibility for how whatever would need to happen in order for your position to be true, it's possible? I'm saying that we have observed that uh, we can breed organisms to be larger. We yeah, can. It, it, and are, are we doing any kind? Are we, I mean, these days, are we doing? Uh, 
uh, I know like the Chinese, for example, are doing massive amounts of uh, gene editing in order to get like their giant pigs and, and giant cows, right? So uh, doing like recoding of a genome from a artificial perspective, like intelligent agency being injected into the equation. Sure, there's all sorts of stuff that can be done. I mean, Did I, I can say edit- that. Uh, I didn't say you said that. I'm saying okay, I'm that not arguing we, that. So move on okay. from that. Well, you just made the argument that it's totally doable, and I'm clarifying to the audience. I didn't mention gene the, editing. I know you didn't. I'm telling. I'm telling the audience what would have to be acquired and what we have to be executed in order for the kind of thing that you're talking about in, to actually realistically be plausible. If you're starting with something like two, two chihuahuas. Nope. Have you seen that the livestock that used to be around, they were much smaller. And that was before the advent of genetics. Especially cattle. Uh, yeah, they mm-hmm. mixed them. Pigs? Yeah, they, they're mixing cattle to get different type of cattle. That's no duh. That's but not it, evolution? They, no, they have, what I'm talking about is taking two pure breed chihuahuas and getting them to the size of the Great Dane. That has never been done. They've bred pigs that have an extra no ribs and vertebra without gene editing. So Taylor, how much are you willing to bet that uh, two Chihuahuas can actually get to the the average size of a Great Dane? <laughs> I don't know. Like, and and well, how they're... many generations? And how many generations would be required? Like, what, what's how much money are you willing to bet on that? I don't know. Whether or not you you can do this or not does not mean does not mean if evolution is true or not. Right. This goes back to my exact point. I was making and the clarification question I was asking you guys is is whatever would have to happen totally well it just happened because evolution is true. Therefore, this is what must have happened. There must have been some way for this to happen. Now, when it comes to actually defending the reasonability of I didn't say you said it directly, but that's the end extrapolation of the point that you guys keep you guys keep uh, grasping onto is oh well it, it could have happened because hey haven't you seen cows breed. Therefore, it, they must be able to get that big. We're talking about something the size of a freaking, in comparison, something the size of a freaking rabbit becoming a steer. Like, uh-huh. Have you seen uh, the breeds of rabbits they've gotten? Huge, huge rabbits. Three, four, five times larger than wild ones. Three, four times. Okay, so are you going to sit here and say that a chihuahua like a is chihuahua. only three times smaller than a Great Dane? I don't know the exact number. I know you can breed animals to be larger. I didn't. Yeah, I, didn't say, I, did, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say. That, I didn't say that. I didn't say that you can. Breeds. I didn't say that you can't. I specifically delineated that there's a cap on how big you can get things, and therefore you have to have a starting point that's higher before you go lower. You're saying you can't breed organisms to get larger. That's not what I've said. I've clarified Humans, that multiple times. Taylor, are you not listening? I have clarified you said that there's multiple a cap. times. You, it sounded like that's big, what you just how said. Big, Correct. You said you have to start with something larger. That's what I thought I heard. But it originally, yes. So you it sounds like you're saying that you can only go down in size. Are you are you saying there was nothing ever that in, from a uh that ever was larger than the things that were able to be bred together and get bigger? And are you saying that they were the direct lineage no. of modern gig, uh, huge uh, cows? Organisms can get larger or smaller. Through lineage, okay. yeah. through through, yes. make a, through through a through a range, you're correct. And is it more likely they get smaller or larger? Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it matters. The only thing that matters it's is observationally the true that they they gen, they tend to get smaller. Can two uh, short people only, have a tall baby? Yeah, because you're mixing them. Start with uh, start with no nope. a population okay. of okay. Let, let, hang nope. on. Let's, average let's, human let's, height hang, has gone up. It it has gone, start with giants. It has gone up slightly, but they have. Um, were there a, you know, a thousand years ago? Are there skeletons of people that were seven feet tall? Uh, Neanderthals, yeah. There are no giants. Also, that humans exist. too. There are, yeah. There's not giants. There, there, there were people that were seven <laughs> feet tall a thousand years ago, but not twelve feet tall. I didn't say twelve feet. Who I know. I'm just feet? saying that. So, I, okay, yeah. no, 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 I, I, we're listen, making listen, a joke. Listen, guys, try to pay attention. Okay, you just made the argument that the people have been getting taller. Yeah, I agree. In, uh, in the 1950s, the average male was five foot seven. Now he's not. He's five foot nine and a third. Okay, that's the that's now, the current height, height change. In the Roman era, there were the average height was like five four for a male. Okay, but was there in the Egyptian era? There's plenty of people that were way taller than that. There's bones all over the world of people that were way taller than five four or five nine. So, 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 are you saying that it's they only got taller because that original tall person's gene spread? No. Okay. Because no, so you're are you there's, saying there's, there's, there's additional because epige- you guys not understand what you're saying. Are there are there you're conflicting genetics? Are the majority are the majority nutrition. of the height 
uh, increases and decreases, uh, epigenetic or purely genetic? It's probably epigenetic. Okay, cool. So if the the majority of it is resulting from better nutrition and hygiene, things of that nature, um, that are enabling uh, slight variations in height, but the uh, pre-existing capacity for the much larger uh, differences in height was already pre-existing. Did it, was it a, is that evidence for new, for evolution of something new or just expression of pre-existing function? Why would height increase be evidence of Can you uh, answer the question directly? New. Can you answer the question directly for once? I can't, it's hard to answer dumb questions. That's not so, a dumb question. That's a, that's, a, question. That's, a, that's, a, that's a hyper-specific question, Taylor. Of yeah. Is, so, the, is the capacity for uh, via epigenetics and other minor uh, variables for significant swings in height, is that, did that necessitate the preceding ability for greater height, or is it 100% new function? Which one? Is variation in height necessarily new function? I'm not sure what that means in this context. Or are you not, are necessarily you not claiming height, inherited? Are, are you not claiming that the uh, height variables are evidence for evolution? That is one piece of evidence. Okay, cool. So does Increase evolution... Increase in size. Right, so does evolution necessitate... Change in size. Ad, uh, additions to the genome, yes or no? What was that? For new functions to be available, does that necessitate new functional information? New <clears throat> mutations? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So is this goes back to my point. Pay close attention. If there was preceding functional information for greater height in the past, how then is these minor modifications in variables in height that we're talking about, the vast majority of which are the result of epigenetic factors, how is that evidence for evolution? You, you, you made the point that it was evidence for evolution. I'm saying that the, the uh, function already preexisted. Are you denying that? The function of uh, being able to change the child, the, your child's height, preexisted. Yeah. Then it's not evidence for evolution. The, the capacity for yes, much great, for much greater height. You're saying you're having to breed for greater height in order to gain the ability to have greater height. We've just clarified that the ability to have greater height already preexisted. Okay, so whether or not it's being yes. is, is the variable. Of course, it preexisted. Every change in evolution is a modification of a preexisting structure. Okay, so, so so is it your position then that the these functions that we're talking about, using height as an example, was already in existence uh, in a greater manner than it is now? Did height exist in a greater manner than it is now? Wait, the Taylor, the, the capacity is that the for question? Height, from, it, the capacity from an informational perspective. Taylor, mutation is new information. You Taylor, are you proposing that this wolf-like ancestor was preloaded with Dalmatian DNA? Uh, one, one topic at a time, please. No. Because that sounds like what you're saying. No, I'm saying it had hair, and it had the ability to change the color of that hair, and the length of that hair, etc. That's what evolution is. It's changes. Which we observe, which all creationist organizations... Except no, but the thing it's just uh, specified information. It's not just random. Every just mutation not, just, is new it's information. Just, it's not yeah. just it's not just the expression of a protein coding. It's the it's the non-protein coding genes. Mm -hmm. How did they There's get there? lots of those prove evolution too, like the ERVs? No, if you're going to propose, AOUs. are you saying that the AJ, potent, AJ addition of a random bit of a, a bit of Shannon information has no relevance in relation to the necessity for functional information and the different the clearly delineated difference between the two so the whether or not you want to say that if there's a gene duplication or uh, in that context that okay there's a greater is an increase in the number of bits that has nothing to do with whether or not it is new functional information and then accounting for the necessities in order for this new functional information to come to be from the evolutionary model that is the whole point that's being made here. So whether or not there's adaptation, uh, it, very often in real time, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Shapiro's uh, work in talking about how they're observing, they observed all sorts of things happening in real time. It was, it was very directed. It was controlled uh, modifications to existing function on the fly based on very specific um, pressures. But it was nothing random about it at all. It was a very um, exquisite function. 
So having those kinds of modifications and adaptations of pre-existing function, I don't, I have zero issue with that. But that's not y'all's position, is it? Yes, it is. Every evolutionary change is a modification of pre-existing traits. Okay, okay. But, but but from undirected but, process, but from hang on, but from an undirected process, correct? Nope. Nope. Okay, it's so, all so directed by you know, like the environment. Okay, if the wolf didn't have the uh, the, the the Dalmatian traits, it's a uh, morphology. How did it get that morphology? Was it already preloaded in the wolf ancestor, or was it through microevolution that it gained these morphological? It's definitely it, microevolution. Okay, the question I posed in my opening is. What is the limit to the amount of microevolutionary changes that can occur in a lineage? Is there a limit? Well, you tell me. Microevolution is still evolution. Okay, if no, this, as long as it's this not going extinct, there isn't. Okay, a if limit. this microevolution was real, you should be able to demonstrate why at least one intermediate between the Dalmatian dog and the wolf. Well, you but just you admitted it is. All creationist organizations admit it is. I uh, think no. we can handle that. Yes. What, 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 what my partner believes in his free time is relevant to this debate. This is about, the, you are defending evolution. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another example of like functional information coming from pre-existing traits is the chlamydomonas. Uh, chlamydomonas. Uh, chlamydomonas. Yeah. Chlamydomonas. Yeah. Uh, which uh, what started off unicellular and became multicellular. Um, and it didn't evolve like some new protein complex or anything. It used pre-existing genes that were just regulated in a different way, which allowed it to basically have tissue differentiation in a body with set amount of cells. Are you talking yeah. about the, I think it was a, a amoeba. No, no, algae. No. The algae. It's an algae. It's a single cellular algae, and it got over 50 weeks. It was able to get an extracellular matrix because no, it, of selection pressures. Well, okay, for, okay, first of okay, all, okay, hang on, hang on. So I, I love when this supposed definitive proof gets brought up. It really honestly cracks me up. So me too. It, in relation to the pan genome, uh, have was the ability to uh, connect and communicate in different in different fashions between the single celled organisms? Did that already exist? Genetically? Yeah. Okay, cool. So these algae were still able, were able to uh, communicate so, so, with each other. Okay, I, okay, again, did the capacity for them to do exactly what was observed, did that already exist? Or That's how evolution works. What? <laughs> well, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Evolution, okay, okay, I'm talking about the functional capacity to do all the different variations they did. Did it already exist, or was this new information that was injected? into the equation in order for all these, for the colony model to, to form. It's not a colony. So it what, it, what okay, it does right. is there, it already had the ability to stick to other cells and communicate with these cells. Cool. So what it did was just change like the uh, temporal regulation of okay. those genes that already existed, which ended up making them stick together in a body. Yeah. And they would communicate with each other as a body and tell some cells to turn off and not reproduce so that some cells would reproduce, which is essentially tissue differentiation and a body. Yeah, and they did this to avoid a predator. And while doing so, mm -hmm. they, became, they became immobile. So, so they couldn't move. And so, it was only after, it was only after, the, the, after the predator situation happened that they split again and became a single cell again. So it was never a multi multi cell or ev multi cell evolution. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't because it was already there. They, they already had that ability. It was just a defensive mechanism. What, no, because it was a mutation. Okay, so are you, guys, are, are you guys actually down? Down? They didn't you, split apart again. That's not true. Uh, they, they did. <laughs> the, the, the by the way, so, I, I would pick um, being immobile over getting eaten by a predator. Anyway. If you don't move, you get no food. Right. Okay. So let's let's about, I'll just, let's, just sit Okay. So they have photosynthesis. The they have photosynthesis. Right. So in war, are there in the military? Are there different specialties of a squad or a battalion or which, which insert yeah. yes. uh, section? Okay. Cool. Yes. So yes. the uh, are all of them all the people all the soldiers are still human? Yeah. But they could have a specialty in a different area, but they're still yeah. Still See, they there. they can break off from the squad and still be alive, but the cells yeah. in the in the multicellular orgy cannot 
organism. <laughs> yeah, they'll die. They can if they break off, they die. That's what makes it not a colony, and what makes it a multicellular organism. That's the distinction. Oh, that, that's that's what. Okay, so the if we are, fought are, wars with are, like are you gonna, blobs are you gonna, of men stuck together, hang on, are, are, are you now going to try and argue that the uh, genomes of all of these different single celled organisms were now uh, identical? What did you ask? Are we arguing that they're not identical? I'm asking you, you claim that they're becoming uh, multicellular organisms, correct? Well, one of the key delineators of a multicellular organism, they're operating from the same genome with uh, uh, different cell type differentiation, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you now, are you guys arguing and claiming that these single cell organisms all have the identical genomes now? Uh, probably not, because every cell in your body does not have an identical genome either. Uh, other than very, very slight modifications and var variables, um, the genome is the same. Well, if there's any slight yeah. differences, it's not identical then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this is really cracking me up this right now. A, okay. This is so, how you uh, cancer. Some, uh, all no, your no, cells have no, like no, no, little no, tiny no, no, differences. This is seriously Sometimes cracking me up right now. difference causes cancer. From all other multicellular organisms. Um, do they start with the same genome and then develop out the variations from there? Yes or no? What was the beginning of that? Do all other multicellular organisms that we observe, do they start with the same genome and then cell type differentiation happens from there? Yes. One. Okay. So would that be a key delineator of what is a multicellular organism? It has a identical genome that can, can be modified, but that's a starting point. Yeah, the, these are clonal from each other. Whoa, 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 they're clonal from each other? No, they're not. Yeah, they, one of them splits off and starts cloning itself and makes itself a new body. You're, you're, saying, you're saying that the original, because they had a variety of different uh, colonies, or like uh, groups, right? You're saying that they were all the same one, just replicated, replicated and, then, and then formed, or there was multiple to start with? What? They were all the same one? How can all be one? I'm asking you from a genetic perspective. Were there whether the parent were there, cell were there, were there multiple? It, yes. Were they all from the same parent or were there multiple parents? Each individual together? has the same parent cell that budded off from its parent. That was a starting point for all the different groups? Not every, not all the different groups, the individuals that we're talking about. There, there are multiple different uh, versions of this experiment. One, they were subjected to predators. One, they were subjected to um, a centrifuge. I, th I think they have it where it's like each uh, they each colony is in a different like petri dish thing, and they start off with I don't know if they start off with a single algae cell or 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 not. And they they bud. I'm actually not sure about that. Okay, so I just, want, I just want to clarify. Are you guys arguing? I'll have to look it up. Are you guys arguing that they all originated from a single cell and then ultimately formed into this multicellular uh, hypothetical colony you're talking about? No, only the eight celled individuals started from the same cell. So they had identical genomes and then differentiated into different uh, portions. Uh, nearly identical, but clonal does not mean exactly identical. Okay, so do they now have massively different genomes, or is there an expression of pre-existing function that enabled these variations to take place? It's expressing pre-existing genes that are regulated in a different fashion. Cool. So if it's already pre-existing information, how is that evolution? regulated. It's, it's now being regulated in a way where it has new functional information. So, so it already had the capacity and things got switched on and off. It already had the preceding capability to have these variables expressed, but you're no, claiming that like, is defense of evolution, not, so, so there wasn't like uh, slow mutations over time and new formation of function in order to create these new regulatory networks and things of that nature. Um, they were already there. And it, within 50 days or whatever you said, um, in a very, very, even with uh, bacteria, that's a very short uh, timeline. You're saying that they create all these new functions? It's 50 weeks. It's like, it's like in code, if you have a command that's functional, and then you copy that command and you place it in other parts of your code, and it now has a completely different function, 
Yeah, that's new information. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you think that, hang on. You think copy and paste creates a new function or just expresses this, an yeah. existing function yeah. in a different spot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy do you know dude, anything about Oh, my God. You, dude, are you sitting here? Oh, whoa, whoa, I, actually, I do. Are you sitting here mm -hmm. trying to tell me? I have a freaking... Yep. I have a contact form plugin on WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, I want to have this module on the contact page and on a uh, interior page for a service offering. You're saying that because I ch I say, yes, insert code here and here, that means it's a new function or the expression of a pre-existing function in a different spot? Which one? Neither. Neither? Mm-hmm. So you're, the, you're, okay, so please defend your position. What, what is it then? So what, how it works in biology. <laughs> This is too good. Go ahead. Taylor, this is very simple. No, let me answer. Okay, go ahead. So the way it worked in the algae was... No, 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 no. We're, we're John, on code we have right to give now. Him no, a chance no, to respond. We're, we're, no, no. John, we're, we're on give code him, right now. John, we Defend have to give him a chance to respond. Website, yeah. No. You Don't dodge. Question, we have to give him a chance to respond. Yes, the way it works in he, the he algae said, is that it uh, turns on reproduction at certain points, and it tells the other ones to turn off at certain points. So in a code situation where you'd have, I don't know, a uh, command that says uh, turn off a certain function or turn on a certain function. And it just, uh, it does that. But you, you take that line of code and you add, you add it in a different way that it does a completely different function. Then yeah, that's new information. You, you just said on and off. Was the, the was the new was the new function, dude? Okay, that's like uh -huh. saying so, I now so, have no, no. That's not like saying I've logged in and said I don't want it on this page anymore. I want to add it to five others. That somehow again, this is not new functional information. This is yeah, that is no, so it is this, not. This it is not, no, dude. You don't even, oh my, if you copy paste no, 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 something no, no, that's not new. No, no, no dude, yes, it is. No, if it does something back, else, no, Taylor, it's, it's new. To respond. So, so it's not doing something. Else. It's not a new function. It's not a new function. Respond, John. I'm responding to him. He just went, I'm responding to him right now. This is how it works with binary. You can make any different function based on a re different combinations of a one or a zero. Taylor, if I steal the code from a uh, Windows 10 and then just copy paste certain codes in a different spot, but it still does the same execution, am I going to get copyright struck and taken to jail? Or plagiarizing, uh, but that's not what I'm talking about. But I that's said it has exactly a what you're talking about. <laughs> nope, <laughs> what you're talking about. Nope. Okay, don't Taylor, lie. Taylor, Taylor, I said it has a Taylor, different Taylor, function. Taylor, you, you want to go down to binary? Okay, so let's go zeros and ones. So does uh, ASCII have a very specific uh, code mapping that's been done for a sequence sequence of zeros and ones that equals a b c d et cetera et cetera one two three four five six seven eight ten yes or no? I don't know. So you're talking about binary and how this all these zeros and ones can make this new function, but you don't know if ASCII has specific code mapping of sequences that equal it's, zeros it's, and ones? It doesn't matter. Yes, it is does. It, is this no, Taylor's doesn't. coding information on trial? Uh, well, we're talking. Okay, if we want to go down to, on that rabbit hole. Are you suggesting that the genome is not code? <laughs> Irrelevant. Just like everything you've just been saying for the no, last. No, it's hundred percent. It's hundred percent relevant. It's hundred no, percent relevant. I can Wasn't give you that the genome what I is said. designed. <laughs> and it changes nothing about this. No, no, we're talking about the necessities of the sequence of the uh, codons to be equal to specific functions. Are you denying that that is necessary? What? That the codons must be in specific sequences in order to be it result in the specific function. That's how it works. Okay, so how is that any different than the combination of zeros and ones that are necessary to equal, whether it be letters and numbers, and then uh, from a string perspective, equaling commands that are executed, like how is it any different? So you're off on DNA as a code now? No, yeah. Is that where no, you're talking about? I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm no one cares. I'm going to waste my time. I, I want to make, I make sure. Yeah, you can talk about this on your channel. Like, you're not going to waste our time with this. So, so are you going to argue that uh, evolution does not necessitate the formation of new code from a genetic perspective? You no. can make new code by altering previous code. Okay. As an, as an intelligent agent, alter? sure. I've done this oh, for wait. games. Are you, are, you, are you an intelligent agent who had an understanding of the uh, desired outcome? And that's irrelevant. The but thing that I'm drawing sure. attention to <laughs> is that you, modifications of existing things can be used to create different functions. Did your video yeah. game program itself? So there was there was no new gene in this algae. It was regulated in a way that it makes an eight-celled body 
that has that some cells have reproductive function. Okay, so, did so they that's all, new information. Did they all you lose. Did there's they no, all, there's no way around. Taylor, this, did they all have the preceding rep, uh, replication function? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, so they turned off a pre-existing function, correct? No. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. dude, are you serious? They had the pre-existing function. You just admitted that. We're and then Q and A shortly. Did they turn it on? Minutes. Yes or no? Thank God. Turn it on or off? Which one? Uh, this they is they turned it on and off in at different times. Okay, cool. So was that and with a, different stimuli? So, so turning off. So, if I click off, okay. Here, does so that mean that the, the pre-existing function already existed or came into B when I pressed on and off? This so, is like saying I turned the light on. <laughs> oh man, this is too okay. Good. Here, so, so here's a good coding example. If I have the command execute function, but I change the um, the the cause of the executable, then that's different information. If you yes. But what has okay. to happen? Okay, we're done with that. Now okay. let's move on to right. uh, no, 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 no. We're done. How, how does that have to? What has to happen in order for that change to take place? It moves, which can happen it in genes. On. No, dude. In relation to the code base, what has to change in order for the cause for the if then else to be modified? What is necessary from a co from a, a machine code perspective for that change to take place? Uh, someone types it in. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> that's what, that's exactly what I was thinking. D okay, and what is necessary for that to take place? Uh, you press the keys on a keyboard. Are you looking for an intelligent agent did it? Intelligent code agent can do this equals God. Equals no, God. no, 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 no. Because no, DNA no, can no, do this no, on no, its own. No, no, no. Which we've demonstrated with the algae. Dude, you're, you're using the, uh, no, no. We've already established that the genomes, or the, the algae weren't creating new function. They were turning on and off no, pre-existing function. No, established that it does have new function. You just said it was new function. Dude, you said it's an extracellular matrix. Oh my god. Okay. You said yes to me. No. It's a beneficial so we've been mutation. This. <laughs> this is. You uh, wanted to and, talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is hilarious, didn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is hilarious. These guys are doing such a hilarious dance and dodge. Okay, we only know have that they a couple opened... minutes left. So James, did you say we're going to Q and A? Yeah. Is that where we're at? This is hilarious. Notice that we haven't been. Let's see. We haven't been laughing at our opponents from Atheist Junior in a while. I just wanted to say, notice that me and Taylor haven't been laughing in a mocking way at our opponents the whole debate. I just wanted to point that out. But evolution can have mechanisms that are both natural selection and artificial selection that has an intelligent agent in it. That doesn't disprove it either way. It's an intelligent agent. You can't equivocate that to that's that means that God exists, because I know that's what you're trying to do. And if you won't admit it, but that doesn't work either. No, no, this has nothing to do with God. This has nothing to do with God. This has everything to do with the fact okay. that Taylor and you have both been like, well, all you have to do to make this to change this cause in the in the function is type some stuff in, like, and it so, happened. Now, does it have to be in a hyper specific the experiment? Spot? Happened. Does Get it have, over it, dude? Was new coded information injected into the genome? We already established this. It wasn't injected. It was mutated. Okay, the turning on and off of a pre-existing function is not mutation to new information. It's the deactivation of existing information. We've been over hey, this. Taylor, if I turn on my light bulb, so can we talk about ERV? Is my light bulb not there? Because you said I wanted to avoid that. Let's go with, uh, yeah, what have you got? Let's go, uh, Taylor, what have you got? Yeah, so um, basically you <laughs> kind of dodge the, the whole num it being implausible numbers-wise. And... Um, then you kind of went off into, well, it confers a function, therefore it uh, was designed or might be designed, which it's not because they are confirmed to be parts of viral elements. We can observe this happening today. So we know that they are in fact viral elements. Um, koalas are undergoing this right now. So we know what it looks like when ARVs invade the system now. Um, and they can, they actually confirmed that you can confer function in mice uh, with ERV elements. Uh, can I answer the koala real quick? One? Okay, the koala has two ERVs, ERV B and ERB A. ERB A was already there in the koala, and it, uh, it's necessary to the koala. ERB B is a mutation of ER K KRB A and has become the disease one. So are you providing this evidence for creation because KORVA was already in the koala. It was only after it mutated into KRBB that it became a disease. No, because a god wouldn't uh, make it look like it was all 
there would be no way okay, for look, it to all affect different was lineages to the, the exact same spot. And a God who wanted us to know that wouldn't do that. Disease happen. That doesn't just prove God. Plus, that's not part of this debate. Yeah, viruses cause disease, but um, they take no, the, the mutation. ERV, of, uh, let's hear, let's hear from hang on, T Taylor. Are you arguing that they, all that the vast majority of viruses are pathogenic? The vast majority of viruses are pathogenic. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's categorically false. It's the accuracy, viruses accuracy, are pathogenic. It's the, it's the reciprocal. It's a very small number of viruses are pathogenic. The vast majority are either benign or some kind of function. ERVs or not. Well, we're talking about viruses. Who cares? Okay, well, I'm talking about okay. ERVs. <laughs> okay, so the, the human ERV, ERV. so the ERVs that have existed that have documented function, which I kind of addressed in my opening right. my right. opening. The so, they're like es essential for like development. Okay, so wait, those so we've are viruses. We've proven that organisms can co-opt ERV elements. Uh, four functions that they already have. It has you, never been uh, Yes, it has. Never been observed. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! The co-option, the co-option ERV, the co-option has been observed. The one b was inserted into mice, and it started being expressed where um, normally uh, it, it helps cell-to-cell uh, -cell adhesion in uh, apes' placentas, but it's expressed in in, uh, in the brain in mice and other mammals. So they inserted this ERV into mice, and it started using the, that ERV information to be expressed in its brain, and it started regulating for the brain, and that's how things okay, that's how you okay, okay, okay. viral functions. So, so did you just say that it has it already has a very very similar one that's uh, executing it, that's being uh, like prior to this insertion? It has one very similar. So we said. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, okay cool. So in uh, in code, right? If I take a uh, a chunk of code for let's go back to using something simple for the for the audience of a form, right? And I get the script for it from GitHub, and I freaking copy and paste it into the source code for a freaking web app or a website, right? Um, it came from this other one, but is the browser going to be able to read it if it operates on the same system and it's the same code? Uh, I'm guessing no, but that's oh not my what happened. No, the, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay, the answer is 100% yes. So, so the that's fact what that happened Chrome, in biology. The fact that Chrome can read <laughs> the code that was taken from over here and injected into this other website, but they're both operating on HTML, CSS, PHP, whatever, um, languages that uh, Chrome can uh, interpret, are, are like, what is the relevance to the mouse having a very similar piece of code insert into its genome and then doing the same type of function. It, you, you brought it up. It doesn't. It has a... I didn't bring it up. Snake brought it up, not me. No, he brought up the mouse because we're talking about biological mouse, evolution. I didn't bring yeah. up the mouse. I did not bring up the mouse that, at all, AJ. That was Taylor brought the mouse. I, he's, I he's said brought, that. Example. Well, yeah, I'll give Taylor a chance to respond, then we got to go to the Q&A. The mouse has this uh, uh, regulatory hormone, corticotropin, uh, release of hormone, which helps in uh, cell division and adhesion. It has a completely different system that does this for it, its brain and its hypothalamus, as do mammals. Humans use this in their placenta, they use the ERV in their placenta. They were able to make the mouse use the ERV in their brains. They were able to so, so, so there was so this, is, this is proving so that we got to co jump, so co jump in. I, we got to jump into these questions. We've got a lot so, of questions. so human directed coach. We've got a lot edited. of questions. We're going to jump into the Q&A. Want to say thank you very much for your questions, folks. We're going to try to move fast. All of our guests are linked in the description. You've already been exposed to them. In the most part, you can. You guys are perverts, but you can click on their links in the description box if you would like to. Be exposed more to them. This one from Stupid Horror Energy says, viral mimicry and tumor suppression aren't really functions of ERVs. Viral mimicry occurs due to ERV, endogenous retrovirus, activation. They don't function as tumor suppressors. Their activation can activate oncogenes. oncogenes. I, yep. I feel like it's they, a... They work in... There's... In every instance, that's not what's being argued. 
that's a specific function of specific types. And usually they're working in conjunction with other proteins and other genes, i.e. like P53, in order for the activation of the immune system to destroy cancer cells and things of that nature. So you, I'm not applying a blanket function to every single freaking ERV. I was using examples of different ones that do have these functions. This is like saying every gene does the exact same, uh, creates the exact same protein or enzyme. Like that's just ridiculous. You got it in this one coming from, thank you very much. Alan Brupri says, your mic is tilted the wrong way. Thank you for that. Alan, I appreciate it. I, it oftentimes is, but I appreciate the feedback. Mark Reed says, logical, plausible, probable. Co-opted functionality for ERVs does not solve the problem of how they got into the same place in both chimp and human DNA. How do you explain that? Okay, Mark, as usual, you never pay attention. By the way, folks, there will be an after show on my channel if people want to come and have greater conversations about this. The If you're operating from a pre-existing or a code base that's being used in uh, unison for a variety of things, having code in the exact same spot, somehow not being evidence in favor of that versus happening randomly – um, through undirected process is ridiculous. That's like saying that because every freaking website, if you view, cl right click and view source, is going to have header, title, footer um, in the exact, in almost the exact same spot. And every freaking website, every web page is going to have that. Somehow that is not evidence in favor of it being put there on purpose versus randomly. I don't understand why this is so difficult to understand, especially for you, Mark, given the fact that you claim to be a you know expert in networking and such. This guess. one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Alan Bupri says, BGG and John, what is your plan to influence the scientific consensus? Me? Uh, just make these uh, uh, evolutionists look silly. Which, well, they already do. I really don't have to do anything. Um, on the, I mean, what was the question? What am I going to do to influence the scientific consensus? Correct. Uh, well, I mean, I think that there's already fractions happening. Fr fr things taking place inside of academia already um i think that the ongoing argument to the masses will ultimately be necessary because you know they're going to operate from their dogmatic positions well the evidence is going against them and eventually they'll have to realize the emperor wears no clothes this one coming um, in from oh, i was just going to say the answer is none Swifter says, ERVs cannot be explained away by function. What you need to do is ex explain shared loci, mutations, and long terminal <sighs> repeats, discontinuity, nested hierarchies. Failure to do so makes uncommon ancestry a fantasy. Can you do that? I think we already answered that one. If, if I could add... Why it's so important? Um, I want to give you guys the chance to respond first, but okay. Uh, yeah, it's because of how they're inserted. They're inserted as infections, and function does not really depend on necessarily their location. It's based on a false presup. This one coming in from Stupid Whore Energy says Maddox or OR fans genes encoding proteins of unknown function are mostly found in viral and plasmid genomes makes sense since they mutate madly some encode new families of dna polymerases and topos well a lot of that is assumption um, but the point i was making in relation to all of the orphan genes and the differentiation and more sequencing we're doing the whole point i was making is there's dramatic differences and they're n you're claiming that all they else all oh, they all just magically happen to form themselves uh but wait isn't it the similarity that's supposed to be the evidence in favor of evolution but now we're finding all these massive amounts of differentiation so which one you can't have it both ways this one coming in from bitter truth says john slash skeptic why all why are all living organisms genetically close to each other don't you think they have a common ancestor? Okay, so again, the the more we study the genomes, the more we're realizing there's dramatic differences that we didn't realize were different because we were ignoring entire portions of the genome in the first place. But in relation to the 
What was the second part of the question? One sec. Is there someone with a, like a background speaking or like a TV on or something? Because it's just a little bit, I can yeah, hear some something. crazy echo. This one from now. Bitter Truth says, John, why are all living organisms so genetically close to each other? Don't you think they have a common ancestor? Oh, gotcha. Okay, so um, from a dev standpoint, if you're building multiple uh, apps on, uh, like web apps on like HP, Cake PHP, right? Um, and let's say you're using Bootstrap for your CSS. There's going to be dramatic amounts of similarities, but you can have like things that are just massively different from an end functional perspective. All, however, if you audit, do a code audit and look at all the similarities, you're like, oh my God, look at all the similarities in this code. But then for any, in any other context, somebody's like, oh, well, that just means that there's an evolved from the other one. You'd be considered a moron. So in relation to why would there be similarities? Well, um, if it's all organized, architected, and uh, has architecture from a logic and, uh, and a functional information perspective, I mean, that would be more indicative that it was created by an intelligent agent, not formed for indirect process. But that's just, that's just me. How big a difference is relevant is my question. Yeah, you're not arguing for God at all. The person asked me a question directly, and I have avoided this, that whole point, the entire debate. So don't sit here and try, and now, because I'm answering a question from, from the audience, they now act like this is just an argument for God. That's not what's going on. Go ahead. Fair enough. This one coming in from John Mathers. It says, why are all of the deities in every religion invisible? Every single religion. Not part of the debate. But uh, it's because they are, well, for example, we, didn't, we wouldn't say God exists because then we would say he's an object and we would just anthropomorphize God. So God isn't a thing. So he doesn't I would, exist, but he is true, you could say. There are pantheistic, pantheistic religions that believe that all of nature is representative of God. So that wouldn't be in, in, invisible in that example. I mean, from the from a general revelation perspective i would argue that kind of sort of in line with what aj has said but not quite the same that the things we're observing uh, in the universe would be evidence in favor of you know, god in relation to i mean there's so many other things this is argued uh been argued for millennia in relation to what are the evidence is for or against god showing a physical uh presence like on a ongoing basis I mean, I guess you could do that. And from the Christian perspective, that will happen in the future. But there's a uh, preceding timeline leading up to that. You got it. This one coming in from Mr. Monster. It says, how do you guys dispute radioactive dating, which is empirically checked over and over to be fact? Hasn't been remotely discussed tonight and has zero to do with the debate. This one coming in from... Big Bad Mama says, Maddox, why is Standing for Truth's ERV manual, which you accept, not taught in the science curriculum in any university? Uh, so I'm pretty sure that what she's referring to was just published like a month ago. So how it already have made it into academic curriculum, given the fact that those things are like take years to be modified in the traditional sense. I'm not really sure how that question is relevant. Um, in regards to my knowledge of it, I actually haven't, uh, I've read a couple chapters of it, but I have not read the entire thing. Uh, I actually haven't watched his, uh, I've been super busy with work. I haven't watched any of his lectures on the topic. So I don't really know what the point of the question is. Yeah, give it some time. It'll make it there. Definitely well formatted. This one from Pineapple Platypotamus says for both sides, why do women shave their legs? To, to appeal to um, expectations of gender roles based on Western society. To appear neotenous, I would think. Because of hygiene. John? This one coming in Should from... Men do that? <laughs> John. All right, this one. Appreciate your question as well. Bitter truth. It says, skeptic of evolution. May I know both of your guys' educational background, if you don't mind? For, for them or us? Or everyone? I think they were saying that well, they, they said the skeptics skeptic of evolution. evolution. Uh, oh. 
I mean, I'm a layman personally. I mean, so I don't really think that's important in these debates, but that's just me. Well, well, you don't think it's important? Didn't you guys specifically talk about in your opening statements how if you don't have the uh, education in these topics that you can't really have a challenge to the uh, conventional paradigm? I did. I didn't say say that. I I did because if you're challenging a a widely held consensus from the experts, then you're going to probably need some expertise because otherwise you're going to have very high danger at Dunning-Kruger. Fact. Right. So, so is it your position that there's no people that do have the supposedly requisite uh, degrees who are also making very similar arguments? Do they, do they not exist? No, there's undergo- people are, that are, are they in Genesis. Are they all those? Are they the only ones? Yeah, and they're they're better qualified to challenge the consensus. <laughs> okay, so uh, if let's just hypothetically, if they make the exact same argument as I do, does that negate the the validity and soundness of the argument? Based on who delivers it? Uh, no. It would okay, be just so then, as bad. So what the hell? No, no, no. We're talking about from a logical perspective. Does the qualifications of the individual making an argument have any relevance to whether or not the argument is sound and valid? No, but it does have relevance for cool. uh, what for us being able to have a conversation about it, us knowing that each other knows what they're talking about. That, that's why these people are hired. Uh, because they're better qualified. Oh, okay. So the so, that doesn't would, have, so, so it doesn't have anything to, to do move with on. whether or not it's sound or valid, correct? This one coming in from, mm-hmm. want to say, folks, so sorry. YouTube is glitching. Someone sent in a really generous super chat, a $50 super chat at the start. And I'm sorry, I can't. I tried to put all of them in a little post-it note as I was going. And that one, I think, unless I already read it, just whoever did put that super chat in, if you could at me just in the live chat with just a normal at modern day debate and let me know what that question is so I can for sure read it in case I didn't. Because as I've been going through, I've been deleting questions. I just want to be sure that I didn't miss that one. Bitter Truth there's says, a, huh? Oh, I was going to say, there's a way in your YouTube settings that you can look at all the super chats that you've gotten previously. I was just going to say that. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm looking, but it's glitching. So I, oh, okay. for some oh, okay. reason, I see. it just, I don't know why. It started doing this last night, but it's still doing it to where... I've tried to copy and paste them into a doc really fast, but I just wanted to be sure that I didn't miss that one because I was like, did I for sure get that one? But anyway, this one coming in from Bitter Truth says, Skeptic evol- or Skeptics of evolu- Evolution, can you answer what is the folding code for denatured proteins? And can we predict the native structure of a protein from its amino acid sequence precisely? Just checking. Thank you. Uh, so yes and no, our knowledge is growing dramatically. The AI systems that have been being developed have become better and better at being able to predict the end fold um, of a sequence. Still not hundred percent, but it's uh, getting dramatically better as time goes by. Those AIs are based on evolutionary principles, but just a little tidbit. Uh, no, those, so, no, it's based on knowledge of what uh, sequences result in which three-dimensional fold. Um, From, it's, that's, pre-progr- that's pre-programmed information, and it's based on analysis. John Mathers says, thank you very much for your generous super chat. John Mathers says, buy or download a copy of John Day's, quote, Yahweh and the gods and goddesses of Canaan, unquote. If you aren't scared of it burning your hands, if you are religious. Zealots, fear archaeology and linguistics abrahamic monotheism evolved from canaanite polytheism how do you like them apples theus well uh, personally me i like it maybe my maybe my partner not so much but that's irrelevant to this conversation that's right you're a polytheist aren't you i hope when we have creationism on trial that it will come up because I'm sure that debate will happen. John, no thoughts on this one. I thought it was directed at the atheists. I'm not really sure what the point is. No, I think they're saying that monotheism evolved from earlier Canaanite polytheism in particular, Abrahamic monotheism has. Yeah. Well, it's, it's ironic that people talk about that. It's not going far enough down the rabbit hole. If you keep going down the rabbit hole, Uh, you'll find that that stuff derived from, and it's almost on a global level, um, a monotheistic perspective that morphed into polytheistic. And then in some cases came back into monotheistic. So it's just, 
anyway, keep going down the rabbit hole, buddy. This one if your fingers, in from if your, if your bitter, fingers haven't burned, you can turn the tape. Keep turning the pages. Keep going a little bit further. Bitter Truth says, "What? In order to refute evolution, you guys must know biology. Question for you: What is the cause of homosexuality, especially in the human species?" What I think we'll get to cancer if we answer that question. Well, there is a, a there is a genetic component to it. Maybe it's not one specific gene, but they did do studies that showed that identical twins had a higher percentage if one is gay of the other being gay. But I would say that your sec your sexual orientation ha has a it's more of a nurtured versus nature relationship where the things that you the way that you grow up and the things you grow up around and your things that influence you also are going to have an effect on that. I think obviously. I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around that question. In order to debunk evolution, you need to understand biology. What is the cost of homosexuality? I don't, I don't know. I go ahead. I think they're saying it's just that about the shared amount of knowledge that, that two experts uh, need to engage in uh, to have a, a more expedient conversation, at least. This one coming left the second half off of that question. Sorry. Stupid whore energy strikes again. Question for creationists. A to I, RNA editing can mechanistically increase the A to G mutation rate in the corresponding positions. Isn't this a rich source, one of many, of evolutionary novelty? Uh, can you? I was trying to keep track of your letters and words there. Um, the likelihood of different swaps. I don't think that actually leans in that favor, especially when you factor in the uh, endonucleases and the editase for and all the different error correction mechanisms, which account for the vast majority of those types of modifications. And, and given the fact also there's ones that are specifically to, in place to address those kinds of modifications, I would say that wouldn't actually go in favor of it from a macro view. Gotcha. This one coming in from... Joe Schwartz says, dumb question, will we ever see another animal evolve to have intelligence of a human? I think this or is a genuine not. question. Raccoons, maybe one day. They have the, the hands the, with the opposable thumbs like humans do. If they had the brains of dolphins, who knows what they could do. Maybe the French will evolve one day, but I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> that is offensive. <laughs> I like to dig on the French for some reason. Uh, I couldn't think of anyone else. Right, but, uh, right now, I, I yeah, think not I'm in our lifetimes, probably. Right mm -hmm. now, I would argue that the to extrapolate on Taylor's point, nobody, none of the European countries have a chance. They're uh, they're toast now that the gas got shut off yesterday. Mm -hmm. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question, John Mathers says there are examples of transitional fossils and vestigial organs that they teach in basic biology classes from whales to Archaeopteryx. I think that might be aimed at me. I I'm think assuming. so. Okay, uh, yeah, you can't DNA test any of those. For example, uh, the evolutionists will say with 100% accuracy that the, this... I think, uh, I forget what's the name of the fish ancestor, but they'll say with 100% accuracy that that's our ancestor, despite not having any genetic data. But they can't give a single degree of separation between a wolf and a Dalmatian. That, that's all. You got it. This one coming yeah. in from, do appreciate your question. Stupid or energy, says Maddox in BGG. Look like they are leaning on each other. This one from Bitter Truth. Thanks very much. And... Again, was it Swift or was it you that asked that super chat question that I mentioned earlier, the the fifty dollar one that like came in really early? Was that you, Swifter? But Bitter Truth says dramatic similarity, or they've, or there's common ancestry due to the shared DNA. Why do you ignore it by saying that God made it? We don't even have Adam and Eve fossils, and there is no single evidence for this. So why this interpretation, John, namely the idea that it's evidence of a common creator or designer? Oh, good Lord. I've addressed this multiple times. Go back, rewind to the portion where I was talking about something like cake, cake PHP and bootstrap and analyze that whole point. 
make do some Googling to understand the, the macro view of the, of the point that was being made and then come back. You got it. And this one coming in from Made by Jim Bob says, Snake slash Atheist Jr., if beliefs are expressions of evolution, if theism is a belief that is evolutionarily advantageous, should we all be theists then? I would say no, because uh, the point of evolution is usually to live long enough to reproduce, and being religious has resulted in a whole lot of violence. Um, I would say yes. Would... No, go ahead. Go ahead, Simon. Yeah, I would say it depends on the uh, environment. So there are, um, I don't think it's the theism itself. I think it's more that theism serves as a community bonding um, mechanism. And yeah, that can be uh, advantageous. Um, there are a lot of delusional type thoughts that can be advantageous for survival because it's safer to believe that the wind is a tiger than the tiger is the wind sort of thing. Um, but I think that in more modern times, it's not advantageous. You got so it. It depends Anne. on the environment. I'd say yes. Um, you know, because it doesn't really matter the, the, under, under what flag you fall or religion. It's, it's mostly the solitary when, when an ideology becomes toxic, even atheism can come, uh, a communist nightmare so but you need a structure you need some amount of order you, you just can't have a, a pure disorder that's all you got it this one from do appreciate your question Alyosha says the monotheism argument is historically illiterate too much of difference in the systems that was from one earlier. The native atheist says, don't know who the other guy is, but Maddox needs to look up, quote, God of the gaps fallacy, unquote. You're muted. Are you muted? Sorry, I, I had to step away for a second there to uh, explain to police what I was doing here. <laughs> um, the... Uh, Okay, so God of the Gaps fallacy is based on just what you don't know versus what you do know. Okay, I get so tired of the standard, oh, it's God of the Gaps versus naturalism of the Gaps, all these kind of things. Like, okay, I've, there's number one in regards to this, um, the trial portion of this debate, um, I was not going down the rabbit hole of ID or creationism. So, atheists, try to pay attention to the debate. And then in regards to your, oh, you're going down the God of the Gaps fallacy route, um, the point being made is the contradictions to the naturalistic explanation, not just saying, oh, God must have done it, which is not even really the, point, the position that was being taken. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Beamsy says, do LPP and BGG realize that chihuahuas are extinct and the modern ones are just dogs that are bred to look the same but are not actually chihuahuas yeah we can mix dogs surprise mark reed says bgg are you aware there are four breeds of dog that have evolved in modern times Buer yeah. terrier hold on the barbat the belgian lacanois i'm gonna I screwed that one up. And the Dago Argentino. Yeah, those are all mixed dogs. They're getting new dogs by mixing dogs. Surprise. You got it. And Cameron Hall says, did you get my question? Cameron, I'm, I'm virtually certain we read yours. Let me just double check. I'm going to go back and try to edit undo and just be sure that we covered all of the questions. As I mentioned, folks, there was a, a there was a generous $50 super chat that came in earlier, like at the very start of the debate. And I'm like, uh, like I want to be sure that I read it because I thought that I copy and pasted it because YouTube's glitching so I don't have the list in my creator studio but forgive me if I don't have that this one coming in from do appreciate it bitter truth strikes again where do our memories get stored and how are they retrieved again how can learning be improved what is the difference between explicit and implicit memories 
What molecule is responsible for synaptic tagging, John? Uh, well, one of the latest theories, which I actually interviewed the uh, PhD uh, researcher behind it, um, Ben Galt uh, from the UK, uh, the position he's taking is the mesh code theory and specifically looking at the Talon protein and a couple other ones it interacts with operating as 13-bit binary switches that are dynamically uh, storing information and looks like the uh, the code bait or the code that it's utilizing to store the information would potentially expand the data storage capacity exponentially. Um, they have quantified it and uh, delineated the whole code um, and are now working to interpret all this, but it sends signals into the, into the nucleus uh, for expression of specific genes. Um, it's, it's quite fascinating stuff, but I would say that the uh, mesh code theory and the different uh, components they were working uh, under that auspice would be a starting point for the answer to your question. Uh, memories are stored in the hippocampus. This one coming in from, let me be sure that I've got every last question. If it was you who put in that super chat and it did not get read, shoot me an email at modern day debate and we'll make it right. I'm at modern day debate, modern day debate at gmail.com and want to say i'm searching for any last questions oh yeah cameron you asked if i got yours let me just double check just to be absolutely sure that i did get yours because i thought i remembered copying and pasting it and yeah i did reach out to youtube support today to let them know that i've had this problem and they apparently haven't fixed it but we can talk about dogs while we wait i did it on the uh it was in the uh, creator studio. There's like a lot, like a live if, chat that I opened up. If to you tell tweet, them about. if you tweet at YouTube creators, they usually respond on Twitter. I've noticed that they did respond. They they recommended okay. me uh, for that link that I went to, but unfortunately, they're just surprisingly haven't done a great job of actually fixing it. So let me know if that question was from you, though. I like nobody claimed it, which is I'm surprised. Like, could they? Have, they're not watching. Yeah, quick! Someone yeah. claimed the fifty dollars. Could they have really put in a $50? If I put in a $50 super chat, I would be like staying, I would be like glued to the screen, but it might've been Jeff Bezos. But want to say our guests are linked in the description. Want to encourage you. If you have not already, you can check out their links right now and you can learn more about their views. Oh, Cameron, I did not. Cameron Hall, I did not get your question. If you can at me with it really quick in the live chat, I'll read it. I want to mention, folks, in the meantime, if you are listening via the podcast, our guests are linked in the description as well. So if you are listening there and you're like, oh, okay, who is this person? I'll check out their YouTube channel. This is the first time I heard about Snake or BGG or Maddox or Atheist Jr. You certainly can by clicking on those links right now, whether you be listening via the podcast or via here on YouTube. Not me. Stay away from my channel. I don't want, I don't want uh, atheist versus creationist debate on my channel. <laughs> so to me sassy. instead. Did we just did we just lose John? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, did. did John get he arrested? Oh. Spooked. Well, oh, let, me, yeah. let me switch over here. Snake scared him off. Because I think there were police that it. came out and they were like, "What are you doing out here in front of the building?" And John was like, "Hey, man." Want some drugs? Let me check. Hold on. There's another question. This one came I in from Alyosha. I think the spirits Al- got him. Alyosha says, bigger question is how visual data is rasterized, sound synced, then digitized, stored, then recalled in our consciousness. Uh, well, I guess our, our brains are able to process all that data because they our, our visual cortex has to flip an upside down image that gets it in our from our eyes and we get data from both our left and right ears. It's slightly different. And, our, you know, the human brain is just an amazing thing, isn't it? Uh, no, there is no hard drive that stores what what your actions are in the brain. Uh, what life is, is the, the the combination of spirit and body. So your choices are coming from the spirit through the body. It's it's no different than the radio and the signal. The signal, the broadcast is the consciousness. The signal going through the radio is the spirit. You got it. And this one from Cameron Hall says, can the skeptics provide an alternative working model to explain biological diversity of life? I think that was for John and BGG. 
They're saying, if evolution, if you're not willing to accept evolution, do you have something that would be better than it? Well, I would say creation. I don't know about LPP, but it's, it's not the topic of this debate. You got it. And angry Canuck. Says, hey, can you ask BGG my questions together? You didn't get mine. I sent two chats. Angry Canuck. Was it, let's see, said, did you have a question? Sorry about that. If you were, if you did actually put in that $50 super chat, especially, we've been looking for that one. Let me know. Even if it's not the $50 super chat, if I missed it, as YouTube has been glitching tonight, please do shoot it in right now and I'll ask it pardon that uh kind of i'm curious is anybody else having that issue with uh or any of the you guys have got youtube channels at least two of you do if you uh if you happen to be if you have super chats ta turned on do you have it where you're having the issue of where it doesn't show them when you click on the see all button well um have you have you tried um going backwards in the timeline of the video because on mine like it, super chats will pop up but they eventually disappear after a certain amount of time you know based on how much money they are you know the the correct the, yeah but i don't know yeah i'm trying to when i look at it i basically i can't go back any farther than about 859 yeah and i wish i could go back further i'm trying to think is there does anybody else know of a way to like see an old question well um you said that you you tried going like to your youtube dashboard and then like click on like settings and in there like there's uh one of the tabs can sh shows me like every super chat i've gotten recently that, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I yeah but i guess that one didn't work i mentioned but already if that anybody ha if anybody has lpp's number you should probably call them chicken's okay not arrested that's true. Let me call John just to see that he's not arrested. I have, let me see if I can turn off super chats and then turn them back on. And let me see if that actually does the trick. So donate Ang for his bail fund. Angry Canuck said one of my questions that I sent in was why can wolves breed with dogs? Uh, they can breed, but their offspring are infertile. Well, that's no different than saying why are the lugs on the car compatible with a why two why are the lugs of two sedans compatible? But yeah, there's gonna be some compatibility, but you're not, you're not gonna be able to put the entire engine. There's some compatibility, but the compatibility is in, at least so infertility. So they're not really. Yes, it does. Not in that specific example, it doesn't. Uh, well, it degrades infertility. It's it's more prominent, for example, on a lion and a tiger. Uh, wolf dogs are fertile. It degraded fertility. No. For example, a, a mule is usually infertile. This one. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say the the great infertility. What well, well, you can't get much uh, general fitness goes down. You can't demonstrate that. So. Uh, yes. This one from also the angry Canuck. Thanks very much. Said. If you look at Google, the Dalmatian comes from bloodhounds. I think they're saying that it's not. Oh, well, thank you for that. Thank it you. It doesn't. Let me know, Angry Canuck, actually, if I'm interpreting I you right. This up. I, I was under the impression, are they saying that, do you guys understand the point behind that? Was it that they're saying yeah. that it's not a yeah. new species, or are they saying something different? It, they're saying that the, the intermediate between the wolf ancestor and the Dalmatian is a bloodhound, but that's not true. Go we'll on. accept that, that. That's what they said. Whether or not it's true, that's what they said. Nobody's saying that. Well, the commenter said that. Well, the commenter, but like, but it's not true. You do know that certain breed, certain purebred breeds today are derived from breeds that existed already, right? Uh, the problem is you can't demonstrate any of those. We can't demonstrate there are new breeds within like a lifetime. There, there are dorgies. They're a mix between a dachshund and a corgi. Yeah, you can mix dogs. That's not that's not the problem I'm presenting. I don't see the distinction. You can't make a new breed though. Mixing dogs and getting purebred dogs from like this nebula is hypothetical. There's a difference there. New breeds is hypothetical. Mixing dogs 
yeah, that's real. Uh, but that's I, how all breeds are born. No, that's the thing. You you haven't demonstrated any of this. Where is the intermediate between the wolf and the Dalmatian? You just said it's an abstraction. It's a number. It doesn't exist. Yeah. On the seconds. diagrams. Yeah, it exists on paper. It, it exists as lines on paper, but not in actuality. No, we were saying that the diagrams are in a, they have to extract it. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, that that animal or population of animals didn't exist. That doesn't mean that they're like, it, it exists in people's minds. It don't exist in like fossils or a living ancestor. None of those. Okay. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. What I'm going to try to do is first, let me try to make sure that John didn't get arrested. If he was like, man, I got arrested. They're, they're, let me, uh, I don't think he did. I think it's probably his battery went out. But Mr. Monster says, you missed my super chat. Mr. Monster, I know I for sure read one of yours, but if I didn't read, let me uh, check and see if I can pull up if there's any that I missed. Sorry, folks. It's the YouTube thing that's making it really difficult right now. Yeah, so, so I'm seeing that Dalmatians came from spotted Great Danes. Is that? Uh, yeah, that's been debunked. I can present you the source for that if you want. So, but what's the problem conceptually that certain dogs can f come from other breeds? I think the problem is just conception. It's just abstraction. It's, that's the problem. So where did they come from? They were created, according to me, but that's not part. Of, that's not the point of this debate, is it? So poodles were created by gods. Uh, my position, but not not part of this debate, is it? We can debate that. I, I'm that's just an curious interesting to topic. ask. So it's hard. Should... It's hard for us to know what without knowing what your position is. It's hard for us to really argue back and forth. Oh, I would say whether I believe in God is kind of irrelevant to this debate. You know what? I, I want to debate that topic. Sure. We'll do it. Let's do it. Do it on Snake's channel. Yeah. Right, let's By the way, plug for my debate channel, Debate Cafe. My no, partner let's do it is on a debate a coach. And uh, yeah. Let, let's do it. do it on MBD. I mean, this was fun. Sure. I like people Whatever. watching. I like to collect niche, like real niche topics, though, for our channel. I think James might find that interesting. Yeah. That might be the case. One is, Mr. Monster, I think you asked, uh, you said that we didn't read your super chat on uh, radiometric dating. That one, actually, we did read. So we got that one. And then, Bitter Truth, I know that you had said that we missed two of yours. Let me know which ones they were, because I, I, I'm not positive. I might have missed yours, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got all yours. But let me know if I missed anything. Bear with me, gents. Sorry about this. So if anybody wants to debate whether Avatar The Last Airbender is an anime, we're going to host oh. that debate. What about Korra? Yep, same. Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. Wouldn't it depend how you defined anime? Some people exactly. Define well, I mean, I guess it's uh, the animation style, but uh, was it was a... Uh, Avatar animated uh, by a Western animation company? Save it for the debate, AJ. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about James Cameron's Avatar for a second. This one from Bitter oh, that's Truth. that's definitely an anime. Bitter Truth says, so this is BGG. In cell theory, what is the exact transport mechanism by which proteins travel through the Golgi apparatus? Uh, come again? In cell theory, what is the exact transport mechanism by which proteins travel through the Golgi apparatus? I have no clue. Gotcha. There's, I thought you uh, said in cell theory. Like yeah, theory. that's what I heard first, like in cell theory. <laughs> that's tomorrow night. But let's I know see. There's, I, I forget like, the exact details, but there's vesicles involved. It's been on a while from my Golgi days. It's been a while since I studied that. Like, holy dang. The incel theory. <laughs> yeah, that's what I it, it, sound, it, it sounds like something that exists. Oh, you know, Tate, uh, Andrew Tate would probably fit that. King of incels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling John he's, he's right now. Him. He's like a Chad incel, which shouldn't be possible, yet there it is. Maddox? 
Please. I'm calling Maddox right now. Well, I think I feel like the debate's pretty much over. Yeah. John didn't answer. I think he's in jail. But want to say thank you very much for your fo or your questions, folks. I just want to make sure that I got this last one, but it looks like they may have last left. But the debate, the jail, John Maddox. Hopefully, John's not in jail. But with that, thank you very much to our guests. It's been a fantastic time. I'll be back in just a moment with a post credit scene. So stick around, folks, about upcoming updates about upcoming debates. And BGG, too, yeah. Atheist Jr., and Snake, a.k.a. Taylor, thanks so much for being with us. And we hope you have a great rest of your night. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Kiwi in Springfield. I see you there in the old live chat, you pervert, as well as Jake Green. Thanks for coming by. Says you're going to bail him out. You know, he, he could sit for a little bit. It'll be good for him. Keglanek, thanks for coming by. Mike, glad you're here. Jungle Jargon, good to see you. It's Jason Statham, happy to have you back. Jake Green, thanks for dropping in, as well as on on the wall thanks for coming by and bitter truth did i get the last one let me see here my pleasure bitter truth thanks for your patience on that sorry folks Ever, again if you're the person who i i'm like ah oh, man i wait you know what let me check the super chat see if if it works now if i if i enable it and then i try to open it still doesn't load that's crazy this is i'm gonna destroy youtube but want to say thank you guys for your support Jake Green, thanks for coming by, as well as Sunflower. Thanks for your channel membership support. And thank you very much for your channel membership support, Bitter Truth. Thank you very much for your channel membership, Mr. Monster. Seriously, it means more than you know, you guys. And, folks, if you didn't know, we do indeed have channel memberships. Did you not? For real, we do. And you can use these amazing emojis, for example. Amazing. And soy boy to insult your fellow associates in chat. We want to say thank you guys so much for all your support. And hey, if you haven't yet, hit that like button as that helps the stream. And it really does help. If you thought your side was most persuasive in the debate tonight and you want YouTube to recommend the video more to more people, that is. Hitting like really does help because YouTube factors that into the algorithm and the video is then recommended to more people when people do that. So we do appreciate that. Let me see here. I got to figure out. There's got to be a way. To, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out together. There's got to be a way to see super chats during the debate. Let's see here. Two seconds. I'm going to find this. I'm going to find this if it's the last thing I do. I'm serious. You think I'm joking? Because I feel terrible. <laughs> Oh, man, I just uh, unless I read it, maybe I did read it, but I just erased it really fast or something. But I don't think I did. That's why I feel like such a. I found out that I'm I think I don't know. You guys remember that one night that I told I said that we're going to take the word C-U-C-K back and we're going to make it so that it's not a slur and we're just going to use it as a fun insult. Um, YouTube was not fond of that. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't say that word anymore. Counterintuitive says, hey, James, what's the deal with all the soy stuff? Just wondering. It, it's just being ironic. It's just for laughs. Counterintuitive says, James, what's your max bench? Man, I don't know what it is anymore. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting old. Let's see. I did, what did I do? I think I did 285 twice yesterday. Uh, that was like toward the end of my workout. So it's definitely warmed up maybe a little tired so i think i could maybe still do three bills but uh probably like maybe like one rep max crimson air thanks for coming by says will nephilim free be debating here again i don't know he's invited to but i don't think he's uh, into debating anymore at least for a while he's taking time off or something claire thanks for your like claire said thumbs up 
I liked. Thank you very much for that, Claire. Seriously, your support means more than you know. And Dylan Motes, good to see you. Joe the Toe says, can you tell if I hit like or not, James? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Crimson Air, thanks for your question, though. Yeah, it would be juicy. And then Pure Aussie Gold, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you for coming by. Can you tell I'm a little bit tired? I, I worked really, really hard today on, like, a research thing, and it was, like, it was intense. Kiwi in Springfield says James is a monster. The subway tattoo gives him the power of. That's funny. You're a character. You know that Kiwi in Springfield. Let me uh do something fun since you're here, Kiwi. Because I appreciate your sense of humor. Oh, I just got a message. No joke. I'm totally serious. I just got a message from YouTube support. It says this is Jen, the support specialist you chatted with earlier. As I promised, I'll be sending you an email to make sure that your concern is completely addressed. I've escalated the issue to the internal team and they're currently investigating the issue. It might take some time before I can respond, but I'll follow up as soon as I have info. Jeez, Jen. Oh man, that's all right. What are you going to do? But yeah, I want to say my dear friends, let me load this up. I'm going to load this up. Um, no, it doesn't have an H in it. Here we go. This is amazing. Do you like fun? I like fun, so let's get it started. This is an arrest. I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Don't bullshit me. My dear friends, nobody listens to more Arnold soundboard pranks than me all day, every day. Amazing. Joe Latosa says, James asks Native Atheist if he's afraid of MG, MBJB, debatably. And DJ Dizal, good to see you. Dylan Motes, glad you were here. Stupid or energy, amazing. Robert Summers, thanks for coming by. We are glad that you were with us. It's driving me crazy. I just, I'm like, I feel terrible because someone sent in the super chat and then I, it's just been, I'm like pooped. I, I didn't do a good job of putting it in the list right away, which I'm surprised because I, I like feel like I remember copy and pasting it in here. Did I maybe, did I get it? Big Bad Mama. Let me see here. Did I put it up in the top of my notes? Uh, nope. It's not there. But yes, it is true. My dear friends, we also have a Patreon. In case you didn't know, for real. Did you know that? It is amazing. So, highly encourage you. You can check that out if you are excited about the vision that we have here at Modern Day Debate. In particular, our goal is to provide a neutral platform so that everybody has the chance to make their case on a level playing field because YouTube deserves a better class, a debate channel, and we're going to give it to them. So we want to say thank you guys for all of your support. You guys make this fun. And Bubblegum Gun, thanks for your super chat, says shout out to Pure Aussie Gold and James Wolf. And thanks for your support. Poker Man, appreciate it. Seriously, it means a lot, man, I'm, especially when I'm tired today and I felt like I screwed up. Counterintuitive, thanks for coming by. Says, hey, James, how long do you think it'll be before you're able to hit 315 pounds? I, it's, I don't know. It's going to be a while, but I got to get back into it, like consistently hitting the heavy bench, which I haven't for a while. But I, I think it'll be pretty soon, to be honest. But Jeremy Nolan says, James, thank you for this channel. Thank you, Jeremy. Seriously, that means more than you know. I love you, man. Thank you very much, Mike, for coming by. Always supportive. Jungle Jargon says, can you do pull-ups? Not too many. Maybe like, I don't know. Like if I'm fresh and I'm like going for as many as like I possibly can to failure, like probably like, uh, probably like, could I do 10? Yeah, it's not that great, but I, I don't even know if I could do 10, but this one coming in from Pure Rossi Gold. Thanks for coming by. I see you there as well as <sighs> Master Optics. Good to see you. It says, cause James is in master soy boy mode. Amen to that. Joe Schwartz says, James, do you have a policy on off-topic questions? Uh, it's cool if they're on the topic. We'll usually humor them if they're not too off-topic. 
I don't blame the guests though, because if I was a debater and there was a top something that I was kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't think that's on topic. I would probably be like, uh, you know, I, I really can't comment on it right now because I haven't read about that stuff recently. So it's something that you know, depending on how close to the topic is, I might push for a, a response from or may not. Bastard. That <laughs> was not for you, but California. But yeah, I am. Um, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Is that soy? That soy guzzler, stupid whore energy. Are you still in chat? Mike says this is my favorite channel. Thanks, Mike. Seriously, that means a lot. We appreciate that, brother. We're excited about where it's going. It's growing. It's getting bigger. And Pokerman said, I should say, Doctor James is the best. That's kind of you. Not yet. Almost. I just have to wrap up the dissertation. And then my hope is to go full-time with modern-day debate. Seriously, that would be based and red-pilled. So I am excited, though. I do love what I'm doing for the doctorate. But the truth is I would be so pumped to have, like, YouTube as a full-time, like, to just run and try to see this thing grow as, as fast as possible. Joe Schwartz says, James, how did you get interested in debates? I used to debate all the time, and sometimes I would go on other channels, and to be honest, sometimes I thought the moderators were taking sides, and that's what made me want to create Modern Day Debate, because I was like, hey, we want something to be as fair as possible. Like, we want it to be the case where it's like, hey, that's a neutral channel, and where people would be like, yep, like, there's no, like, systematic bias there. But yes, thank you guys for your support. I got to go. It's getting kind of late here, but I want to say thank you guys for your support. I love you. Thanks for making this fun, and counterintuitive says get down that's that's good i like that and kiwi in springfield says james come to california so we can walk both walk around la and tell everyone we're doctors handing out soylent well you you bastards i don't know if i'm gonna do that i'll call you back i'll let you know are you crazy this one from brandon burrow thanks for coming by we are glad you are here with us says the rest of the world discussing geopolitical diversity and American hegemony. MDD is like evolution cap or no? That's right. And we're just getting started. Alyosha says, get to the choppa. And Largo Stefania says, great channel. Thank you, Largo. Appreciate that. Screwy Scudagera, see you there. I see you there in the old live chat. We hope you're doing well. As well as Alyosha and Mr. Kreenan. Thanks for coming by. It says, good show. Thanks, MDD. Thank you for your support. Seriously. I love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And I'm excited to see you tomorrow as we will have a debate tomorrow. We have a panel going. It's going to be a good one. And we look forward to seeing you. Cookies? So stick around, you guys, at Modern Day Debate because this is just the beginning of our story. We have big things coming up in the future. Thanks for all of your support. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And we're excited about the future. Stick around. We'll see you in it tomorrow night. is in deep trouble who is your daddy and what does he do dinosaurs just do it do it now just do what i tell you don't worry who told you you can eat my cookies game over go and kiss your mother's behind Master the baby